25. Sure. Sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. yes. If I could buy forever at a price, I would buy it twice. Twice. If I could turn back time. I don't know what that... It's TT, baby. Oh, 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 right, 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 right. Sorry. I wasn't thinking specifically about the one song that that's a <laughs> reference to at 6.21 a.m. <laughs> What did y'all see that shit with the black pink video and no. um, the lovesick girls? No. So I think was it Jenny was in like a nurse outfit because she says something about like a doctor couldn't cure him. I don't know. Uh -huh. uh, but then there was like a lot of backlash from like Korean nurses and doctors like you're perpetuating like sexy stereotypes or something and so they had to like take down the original video and edit that out uh, have they watched k-pop videos i mean it was specifically <laughs> the nurse thing i don't know that's so weird certainly yeah. i mean if, if if somebody wanted to make an argument that like let's move towards a better less objectifying future for k-pop videos i would be like yeah sure but blackpink is one of the like le le less <laughs> uh, i don't know they usually have really interesting costume design that is not not on october 100%. 5th the yeah. korean health and medical workers union issued a statement scrutinizing the wardrobe decision the cap tight and tight and short skirt and high heels are completely different from an actual nurse uniform the <laughs> oh outfit and portrayal directly Jesus imitate Christ. the typical sexual stereotype and excuse it as a simple costume <sighs> they really out here what? like my my job is not a costume <laughs> I, I i don't i it's, i don't know <laughs> That's... That seems a little bit. Uh, even though nurses are professional healthcare workers, for the sole reason that there are more women in the profession, they have been subject to a sexual to sexual object objectification and derogatory portrayals, expressing doubts about their professionalism. They're not wrong. They've been fighting That's... for a long time to change this. That stuff wow. is. I mean, I. Un I mean, it's sure. The interesting part yeah. is that the nurse outfit that she wore, while not the same as what professional what actual nurses mm -hmm. wear yeah it's not as bad as i was even expecting it to be mm -hmm. <laughs> like it's it's i don't know uh it is yeah no it's dumb it's i mean the thing is is that i get where they're coming from and i think it, you know it's great to i i would have perhaps framed it differently as like hey this is an example of this thing occurring, not like we can, we condemn this, but more like it's important to keep in mind as you watch this video that these things are true because women in, in Korea have been fighting for a long time for more, you know, fair portrayals and, and, and less objectification, but it's, it's a weird, it's a weird place to take that shot, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, shall we light this sock? Yep. <laughs> it's full and ready to go. Let's rip these nails, baby. Oh God. On. Let's let's hammer this knife into our brains. Hello <laughs> and welcome to a very uncomfortable episode. <laughs> of the gaming fix podcast on episode episode 142 on october 10th i'm so uncomfortable october 10th 2020 i am your host andre cole aka your partner's favorite noodle i am joined today by alex oh god being put on the spot for a favorite noodle is hard um yeah. i can it's al dente I don't that's know. not a type of noodle yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, it's I just think... it's a it's a joke on hard. It was like noodles oh, al dente. Got, gotcha, it's still gotcha, like a little gotcha, wow. gotcha. Okay, it's still let's early say, here. Let's say a penne is all right, and a rotini is pretty good. Okay, uh, Allison. 
Um, a quality bowl of, of ramen is probably my favorite. Okay. Are we it's, talking like thin, or like thick, I want soft probably, or like firm? Um, whatever the chef wants to make. I don't ah, know. omakase. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. And Pat. Yeah, I would say a uh, ramen or yeah, uh, it's tough. You d definitely not an Italian noodle as much as I, I mean, I eat a fair amount of rotini. That's probably my favorite Italian noodle, but, but, but it's, it's going to be either a ramen, a yakisoba or mm. a chow mein because chow mein highly underrated noodle. Um, a lot of times chow mein gets relegated to like a side dish or like the little bit extra, but chow mein is a, is a, is a delicious, uh, delicious noodle on its own without yeah. even like additives. So what about, what about, how do y'all feel about udon? Udon is good too. I like udon. I like every Asian noodle more than every Western noodle. I, I think that's probably I, I have accurate. Like a, yeah. I have a problem with like some, uh, noodles uh where they're just like if they're too too wet too uh too soft like an udon they're so th like udon can't just, get really there's, soft there's, there's yeah there's it's harder to much. prepare it's harder to prepare and it's uh yeah or like a uh, somen which is like a mm -hmm. very like a thin mm -hmm. noodle and they have this so they've got these restaurants in japan in like the kagoshima area where you put there's like a thing on your, on your table and water just circulates through it. And it spins, like just goes around and you put the noodles in it. And then you just like stick your chopsticks in and the noodles go by and you just collect noodles and then pull them out and then like eat them. Okay. I want to go to this like, place. They're real like slippery. And like, it's, I don't know, it's a texture thing for me and it's just not right. I like, I, I would really enjoy that, but I'm really bad at, um, that would be very embarrassing for me because while I'm a relatively proficient chopstick user, I can't, I don't know that I could get noodles rotating around. Yeah. Oh, I mean, uh, they just, they come by and you're just like, they're just hitting your chopsticks and then you're pulling them out. Like it's, yeah, you know, like, that sounds do not like to me, Mr. Miyagi, like grabbing each noodle one by one. You're, maybe you're not. Man. Have you, have, have y'all um, ever had Filipino spaghetti? No, I don't think no, so. No, but I've, I've seen that that isn't that like, uh, like more of like a fast food thing there it, it can be but like, like the, sauce they use, the sauce they use is like really sweet mm. like, honestly, huh. i don't know if i'd like that it's it's i don't weird. know if i'd like that yeah. i like i like That's... a real savory and a real spicy noodle i don't like a sweet like noodle dish yeah. i don't really like sweet that much um with my noodles uh japanese uh tomato sauce tends to be pretty sweet so it's probably not that dissimilar uh, i guess that make that makes sense i mean you're there and you're pretty sweet so ah uh. that's all the tomato sauce i eat um <laughs> i was at i was at uh, an asian market yesterday um on the way back from getting a covid test which i didn't explicitly need but wanted to reset my contact tracing basically don't worry too much if you have to get one of those it's not that bad it's uncomfortable but it doesn't hurt. Um, they do touch your brain, though. Um, oh. That's not true. <laughs> they, I know. They, but If you go back go, and to listen to last week's episode, you'll notice Pat has a completely different personality this week. They do go all the way in with a Q-tip, but it's not Ugh. its not as bad as it sounds, believe it or not. I wouldn't worry about it if you have to get one at some point. Um, but I, I, all, I, on the way back from that, I was going right by the family market, and so I was like, oh, let me stop and get some um, sake, for this weekend because i've been watching anime and they were drinking sake in it and my partner was like that's that looks good i've never had sake before um and uh i had not been to that asian market before i didn't realize it was an enormous one which was rad and i need and i'm gonna shop there more but i got very overwhelmed looking at the noodle aisle because they had like i don't know there was like 30 or 40 different kinds of noodles that I wanted to try. And then they yeah. also had the section that has the refrigerated and frozen noodles, which is mm -hmm. not something you ever see at, um, at, at like Western markets, normal grocery stores. Um, and so I was like, Oh my God, I don't have time to peruse this bounty of noodles. Um, so perhaps I'll have to go back and we'll have like a noodle cast or something. 
You do Ooh. you do a hot pot, and then at the end, okay. when you've just got like the broth left, you put in the udon noodles and, or the soba noodles, and it's just like soaks up that extra broth, and is a nice way to end the meal. They have a hot they tip. have they have a hot pot thing there. I couldn't find it, but my coworker was telling me about it. They have a hot pot thing there. I had not heard of this before, but they're like hot pots that you just stick on the the stove. They're like instant mm. hot pots, kind of, not instant, but they're like, I guess you, they're like, you make them on the stove and everything's in it. And you just like put I, it on the stove. That's the impression or... that I got is that it, it works kind of mm. like, um, like Jiffy pop, but for hot pot, what? I don't know. It right, sounded sure. wild to me. He said, it's amazing. He said it's better what? than restaurant hot pot, but I just, <laughs> I don't know. Oh. Can't confirm, can't confirm that I'm understanding what he was saying correctly. Cause I couldn't find them and I gave up because I was sounds like, like shenanigans. I was like, st- there were people there who were clearly under, who clearly shopped there regularly. Again, I hadn't been to that location before. Um, and there are people there that clearly shop there regularly that I was just like standing slack jawed in the noodle aisle and it's a huge <laughs> store, but very thin aisles. So they couldn't get mm-hmm. around me, yeah. especially with distancing rules. So I was like, Oh yeah, yeah. I need to leave. Cause I'm <laughs> making it harder for other people to do their shopping. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of interesting how how that works because I feel like there's a um, an independently run uh, Asian grocery store near me, and how like the kind of um, disparity in customer base, uh, like like a good a large portion of it is people who are doing their regular shopping there, and this has the groceries that they need, and then the other portion is like weebs going like. Ooh, what is this? And so it's like you need to. Yes, and I was that was. Well, I don't. <laughs> Not saying you're the weeb. No, but... I don't typically think of myself as a weeb, but also that is what I was doing. So <laughs> <laughs> I fit that right. description yesterday. So one last noodle thought: um, Have y'all ever had the Samyang ramen, the extremely spicy Korean? No, stuff? because I don't no. think I'm good. Not or spice. Tolerant enough. I I have become very spice tolerant over the last few years. I yeah. like I seek I I seek it out heavily, but the I don't like kimchi, um, and yeah. I feel like it, Samyang it's kimchi. It, it's more okay. like gochujangy. jongi. Okay, well, that's good. To know. They definitely had it at the at the the grocery store, so I'll have to check it out because it's pretty great and also pretty intense. Anyways. The thing I need to know, I'm sorry. This is the thing. The thing <laughs> I need to video game podcast. We do <laughs> the thing I need. We don't have that many video games to talk about this week. The thing <laughs> I, I need help understanding for a lot of the ramen that is not packaged for American consumption, but that is clearly, mm-hmm. you know, imported, but is I'm a vegetarian, right? Or a pescatarian at least. So I, would like to try Samyang, but it's very hard to determine what of mm. the flavors mm. are vegetarian. Um, because they even, they have things like, like most of their flavors say hot chicken on them. Some of those don't actually have chicken in them. That's just <laughs> um, kind of a flavor. But, but it's hard to know what hard. How are you like, like a tell. no like chicken broth type vegetarian? I prefer to or... avoid it if I can. Okay. Um, it's if I wouldn't get like upset if I had it at a restaurant by mistake, but, um, I would prefer, I would not purchase something knowing that. So yeah. it's, it's, that's, uh, that's my I, struggle. I mean, a lot of, st- I can't speak to Korean stuff, but like you've got like your, your show you base, your soy sauce base, yeah, yeah. like your uh, miso, totally. base. miso base. Yeah. It's, it's, it's easy to find vegetarian ramen to eat. Um, yeah. whether it's at the Western grocery store or at the, I mean, they had like multiple things yeah. that say vegan and big words on the thing, but, um, and we have a local ramen restaurant that we go to that is really, really, really good. And they do pretty much anything that doesn't have, it's not like katsu. They'll do, they'll, they'll do a, a, like, do it with tofu and veggie broth. Um, mm. So, uh, uh, we have some breaking news. Oh, good. Uh, I have sent it to our group chat so you all can read it. But Charles Martinet just sent out a tweet. Quote: He voted. I, ha- oh, I have officially voted. Yippee! If you haven't yet, please go vote. And if you haven't registered, do it yourself. Hey, this guy's middle vote. name. Yeah. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Charles Andre I like that Martinet. you specifically nice. tagged me in this. Like, yeah. I, I, I like that. I, 
I'm a little you nervous. You just look so happy. Well, we haven't gotten our ballots yet in Washington, and I'm kind of like, hey, y'all oh, want to yeah. break me off some of that ago. ballot? Um, <laughs> yeah, I got my ballot sent off this week. Yeah. I very <laughs> specifically <laughs> had to not vote for Kanye West, so. That's good. Uh, but I, I did not, it, but. Yeah, of course. But I don't know why, Pat, but break me off a piece of that ballot. Just remind me of how it's made, that old TV show, and how. Like, that's fine. Everything that you ever use or consume or whatever starts off as a bigger version of whatever it is and then just gets chopped up into smaller versions of itself. Yeah, they have to shave the ballots off of the ballot tree. Exactly. And then so it mail starts them as to one people. big ballot and then you're just chopping off the smaller ballots. So there's a shortage of ballots this year because of the forest fires. Uh, yeah, that makes sense why it's not in Washington. Okay, Charles Martinet's Twitter feed is the most wholesome thing I think I've ever seen. Welcome to the Charles Martinet uh, Twitter podcast, where we and, review and, uh, the, the, the Twitter. And spicy Korean ramen cast. Yep. Uh, but this week, I'm sorry to disappoint our listeners, but this week we're covering video games. Oh. So, not just some... Charles Martinet. <laughs> <laughs> a couple video games here and there. Um, so uh, since we're on the topic of noodles and ramen and Japan, Alex, how about uh, you start us off with your Japanese games or anime or whatever it is you brought this week? That's that's a transition. Nice. Yeah, um, we're, we're we're already we're adjacent. Let's let's keep it. Let's let's <laughs> roll with it. Um, let's start with the actual video game that I have completed before diving into the other stuff, uh, of okay. which, uh, we started talking about it last week and that was 13 Sentinels. So I don't know, uh, if any of y'all have checked it out since we talked about that, but I have, uh, in that time finished 13 Sentinels. So I've, uh, probably completed it in about 31 ish hours, somewhere around there. So 30 plus or minus two, let's say. Um, and what I was saying last week was basically that it is visual novel, but with like a really interesting art style, which is kind of Danganronpa E in terms of like how it looks during Danganronpa cutscenes, but that's the actual game. And then you have the RTS section. So that's the short version if you didn't listen to last week's cast. And it's kind of a time travel story. Like, well, it's very heavily, explicitly a time travel story uh, where you're, you, your characters are traveling between different eras and they're very set. Like there's 1945, like right at the end of the World War II in Japan. Uh, there is 1985. Then you get to like 2040 something and then like uh, 2100 shows up at some point. So it's kind of chrono trigger in, the, in that way in that like they are discrete areas and times and stuff that you're going to it's not like you're saying oh i'm going to go to one or two years after or one or two years later and you actually yeah. have pretty much no agency in the story like you're just kind of watching it unfold and occasionally interacting but very rarely um because it's a visual novel but it's its story is definitely what you're there for and it does something that i appreciate in a lot of storytelling where it's a complicated story. Like it's complex. There's lots of moving parts and lots of stuff going on. And it just kind of puts everything out there. Like it doesn't contextualize it. It's just like, yep, this is what it is in this world. And we're just going to talk openly about like this technology that, you know, if you have no context for it, that makes no sense. Or like they're talking about these characters and other people you've never met as though like everyone is familiar with them kind of stuff. And that kind of gets confusing. <laughs> Like you're just like losing track of what's happening a lot of the time. Um, but once you start getting near the end and all the neurons actually start connecting in your brain, then it's like, oh, okay. Everything that's been going on here actually makes sense. So um, the way it ends up being split up is you have two real sections. Like we said, the RTS and the story mode. I don't know what you want to call it, but those are actually like two different menu options and it'll show percentages at the bottom of how far you've gotten into each. And when you're in the story mode, like you can select one of these 13 characters at a time 
and you're going through their stories and then eventually you'll hit like, oh, this character's story is blocked until you complete this other condition. Like once you reach this other character's story that hits this beat or uh, you have to have 80% completion in like six of the other protagonist stories in order to get this one. So it's it's how they're keeping their timelines kind of in check. So you're you're not getting spoiled or you're not getting too far ahead in one person's story. And then like, you know, uh, having twists and turns revealed in other people's story. So it's, it's actually really well formed in that sense. Uh, and I think the story they tell in the end is extremely creative and like, I will give them huge props for that, but I will say that it didn't really move me that much. I was like, yeah, this is really good, but I, it didn't blow my mind because uh, I think even something I said on last week's podcast ended up kind of being exactly where that story went. And I was like, oh, okay. So it, it was a bit more predictable than I expected. So that that was a bit of a bummer. But yeah, overall, it's good. Um, I, I don't know. It might be on my game of the year list, maybe around number 10 or 9. But uh, it, it's, it's worth playing. I... I would say maybe wait for a sale if you want, but I think it's worth supporting Vanillaware because they did make something pretty unique with it. All right. Uh, well, does anyone have any thoughts on 13 Sentinels? Questions? I'm concerns? interested in playing it at some point. I think I'll probably yeah. wait for a sale. Um, I I would love to see, because did Dragon's Crown ever come to other platforms? I feel like it did, didn't it? I or, am not sure. Or did actually. it never make it off of... Um, can't remember. I mean, those are. I think those are. So, yeah, it didn't. I don't think it did. Those are Sony PlayStation funded, so. Four, PlayStation Three, PlayStation Vita. Yeah. Okay. Then it'll probably never leave the PlayStation, which is kind of a bummer because I feel like of all the platforms that I have with which to play a visual novel, the PS4 is the least. The one I'd want to do it on the least, I guess, other than maybe the Xbox. Um, but uh, but I would. I mean, this, it sounds like the story sounds kind of interesting, especially with the jumping between, I didn't realize that it had like you, you went to 1945 in the eighties and stuff. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, it, it, like one of the interesting things that happens is that, uh, and this is very early story stuff. Like, like yeah, it's fine. First, first I know hour. the general premise. It's like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But like, well, there's like first hour stuff. So don't worry. This is not heavy spoiler, but like, you go back to 1945, like you go to one of those characters and like you see the characters like uh, this dude, he's a, he's an, he just got in the army for that. And he's like talking about how he wants to take the war to the Americans and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, then like, there's basically like, uh, like a bombing run that goes on a city, like, and they go and inspect all the damage and all this stuff. And like, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty brutal in some ways. And yeah, then he gets, he gets, he unexpectedly time travels. Like he, he doesn't know it happens. And then suddenly he's in this like place full of skyscrapers and stuff. He's like, what happened? This isn't Japan. Like, am I in America? Like what the fuck? And then he, he looks around. He's like, Did, what is this a dream? And then he's like, wait, but all these signs are in Japanese. These people are speaking Japanese. What, what's going on? And like that kind of stuff is pretty cool. So like the fish out of water stuff they do is pretty interesting. So, yeah. Yeah, I um I know that it has to do with like a kind of classic at the points anyway, has to do with a kind of classic like mechs versus a universal enemy kind of thing. Um which yeah. when I found that out, I was like, eh, I don't know about if I care about that. Uh, but it it gets more interesting than that. Yeah, that's good to know. That was the biggest thing is I watched some early of RTS gameplay and it looked extremely boring and they weren't even really like showing what the enemy was. They were just, just like explaining what they were in the text. And I was like this does nothing for me at all. But at the same time the yeah. story sounds like if it gets more interesting than that, that it would be something I'd want to check out. What the enemies are becomes a major plot point. And okay. Their, their origin and why they're there. Like that kind of stuff becomes major. And also speaking of the RTS section, um, I came up with a strategy that was basically foolproof and it was kind of ridiculous how powerful it was. It carried me through like every battle in that game at the hardest difficulty, except for one. Yeah. Um, like it was kind of ridiculous 
the and and I mean it's I don't think it's like an it's it sounds like it's sort of a Pacific Rim situation when it comes to the the existential threat um at least that is the implication from the 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 released gameplay footage that Sony put out of <laughs> the game being played from a very early battle um but I don't know if how much more complex than that it gets so fairly um and it's hard to talk about without spoiling yeah this, that's fine we don't so, have to spoil it um yeah. but um when i at first when i heard about it as being like oh 13 different characters and there's some time travel that sounds really interesting and then when i saw that like the premise that they were showing in that video i was like well this is kind of tired um but knowing that it gets more engaging and complex is, is good to know yeah is it something i mean you might check out allison yeah, I'm definitely interested in checking it out. I'm kind of thinking about waiting for a sale, but uh, it does definitely sound really interesting. And uh, to be clear, Umarangi Generation has a similar premise, and that is a game that I really enjoyed. So, <laughs> uh, and its premise is not, they don't go into the lore around that stuff. It is purely a game about interacting with human beings that are dealing with the consequences of that kind of stuff. So, sure. uh, so yeah. Anyways, yeah, 13 right. Sentinels, pretty cool. Well, from visual novel to uh, 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 <laughs> I don't, I, I was trying to think of some dumb thing to call it, but it's, it's an anime, right? That, that's the other. I mean, oh, no, it's another visual, visual novel, novel right? No, it, yeah, no, I'm you doing... have another visual novel on here. Yeah, I thought you were gonna go from visual novel to visual novel. <laughs> Oh no, yeah, yeah no, right, no, because I forgot. Like, uh, yeah, no, it's uh, it's different. It's they, not the thing you talked about last week. Yeah. Allison has the same the, the same name, but it's also a visual novel. It's visual novels all the way down. Yeah. yeah. Uh, technically, they're part of the same series. Um, yeah, there was an anime made out of the visual novel I'm I'm playing, but I haven't watched it because apparently it's a mess. Um, mm, good to uh, know. Yeah. So, I'd, is it is it like? connected to higarashi i know so, it's so <laughs> so so uh, la last week we talked about the 2020 um remake of higarashi and how alice and i were are both old fans because we're both old and fans yep. and we watched it a long time ago and it, that first episode was like pretty much a shot for shot remake of the first episode of the original series and we're like wow that's really cool like little subtle differences here and there where it's like oh it's interesting i wonder what they're gonna do with it and like what other subtle differences they'll make uh <laughs> um on thursday i guess it was i got a message from allison who had started watching the new episode being like just all caps uh <laughs> just like uh you should probably watch this and i did and then immediately said to pat <laughs> don't watch episode two of higarashi because this is a remake in the Final Fantasy VII sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is great. I mean, it's <laughs> it cool that sure they... sure is. Watching... Uh, I just went back and started watching the original show after we talked about it last week, and I'm really enjoying it, but I definitely watched the first episode and was like, it's cool that they're reanimating this, but also do it doesn't feel like it super needs it to me. Like, it doesn't look bad. It's fine. It's totally watchable. There's nothing about it that is like... Oh, this art style. I mean, I don't know. It's, it's fine. So I was a little yeah. surprised that they went to the, tri and, and like the story is very coherent unlike FMA and Dragon Ball Z. So sure. like, there's a lot of Dragon Ball Z just has a lot of extra stuff. It's not that the, that it's not coherent, but mm -hmm. anyway, it made sense that like they did Kai and brotherhood because you could argue that those improve <laughs> on the, the originals. I mean, brotherhood surely does. Um, but uh oh, hearing that it's mean, right sorry oh, dragon ball yeah, kai. sorry i'm dragon i'm comparing because sorry yeah I, the second season of higurashi is kai too i was like wait what no 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 <laughs> um no no dragon ball z kai um yeah. those were dragon you know, ball kai please <laughs> <laughs> okay um but uh but anyway i was surprised and kind of a suit as i was watching the first season i was like i bet that this that this new thing is a final fantasy seven remake situation um which is interesting because the original i'm really enjoying it i haven't really had the like um 
it's it, it's gotten to a point where it's starting to feel like dots are connecting and i'm kind of like this is a really cool story it's not like like completely like blowing my mind in the like holy fuck oh my god sense yet um so obviously i have more to finish with it uh but um it, it's it it doesn't super feel like there are things they're gonna do that are it is gonna be like I'm, i i don't know it'll be interesting for to finish it and see um but umi Nico, umi Nico is also a when they cry thing it's just seagulls right. instead of cicadas <laughs> so uh <laughs> what I was, what I, yeah what i was gonna get to is with the the higurashi remake um they introduced like the actual like what they do in anime a lot of the time is they won't have the like the opening with the music and all the animations for the season until the second episode and that's what they mm -hmm. did here and there's some scenes in that which people on uh forums and reddit and stuff are like you know that's a character from umineko oh great <laughs> and people oh, are like great what is going on and like, like wait that building <laughs> looks like the building from umineko yeah so, so it's like people so, are speculating that there might be connections which yeah oh no and, and, i know right <laughs> and, and so alex and i are sending each other messages like do we need to do do we need to know Umi Neko now? God, am I yeah, going to play so, Siconia also? No, that's, don't that's, think like, so. that's like set like thousands of years in the future. But I um, mean, <laughs> um, but yeah. So uh, watch Higurashi. Maybe wait on the set on the new one if you haven't watched the original. Yeah, I think I think with, we were trying it, to recommend last week. We were like, oh yeah, anybody can jump in, and then like bo I think both of us sent messages to Pat that were like, don't watch it. I was not going to anyway because yeah. I kind of had an inkling that what was going to happen was going to happen. Um, and it's I like the original a lot, so it's, just it's funny. It's, it's, it's very like, funny. No, Pat. Yeah. So all of that to say, it's really good. And the stuff they're doing is crazy, and it's basically a stealth season three, um, yeah. which is which... fucking awesome. <laughs> uh, but especially this many years later. Uh, but yeah, so the fact that there are potentially Umineko characters and locations and stuff like that showing up prompted me to get back into Umineko because I started it uh last year maybe two years ago i and i could have sworn this was talked about on this cast at some point it, it was because i gave it a start and i was like yeah i'm gonna try and play through this but it's like it's a big commitment it's like oh my god uh, it's, is, it's is it a it, big commitment it's like i think the questions arc is somewhere around 30 or 40 hours and then the answer arc is around 40 hours yeah so it's about 80 hours total yeah that's brutal <laughs> so, yeah it's very uh, brutal so I, I am further in this time than I was that time. Um, I'm about four hours in and it, it, it's, it's okay. good. It's, it's catching me. It's, uh, the story is, has started going places towards like, Oh, okay. Yeah. Now these characters are settling in and making sense. And, uh, I th if it up? ends up being actually relevant, I'll probably go back to it at some point because I don't think I can que squeeze in 80 hours of visual novel into my life right now in <laughs> no, addition I, to trying I, to watch this I anime. I totally understand. No. <laughs> yeah, it, it's kind of a huge undertaking. And the only reason I'm doing it is because I'm such a big fan of the original show. Sure. And Yeah, uh, and I've always wanted to uh, go through oh, Umineko, especially since people who like Umineko love umi neko yeah, so they won't, it's like, they won't shut up about it <laughs> yeah. Dude, i will so I will, it's one of those things i've always wanted to kind of experience but... i will put forth that that i would argue that that is true of every visual novel that we've talked about on this podcast yeah, uh, i mean especially with umi neko i feel like <laughs> umi neko one, fans go hard for umi neko yeah and it it got way wider appeal in a mainstream sense than higurashi ever did in the visual novels because it got the mm, ps3 mm -hmm. release which got like full voice acting throughout and like completely new art and everything like that so uh anyways it yeah uh don't have to talk about it too much right now just because i'm only four hours into an 80 hour thing and it's interesting it's good the seagulls make sense 
uh, just like the Siconias make sense, or cicadas make sense in uh, <laughs> time. Uh, yeah, the cicadas make sense in uh, Higurashi, but uh, they it, haven't yet. That's I'm looking forward to that happening. They will. <laughs> so it's cicadas because they're always fucking making noise here, man. That's why. That's that's all you need to know. Yeah, uh, it it, does, it it. I don't remember if they call it explicitly out in season two, but you'll start noting that when they make the sounds, there are certain things happening. Anyways, uh, similar, yeah. similar thing is happening with this in the seagulls because it is set in like a private Island by this extremely rich family. Uh, and they got to this place and the seagulls, which are usually there are not making any noise. And they're like, what the fuck is going on? So there's a bunch of mysteries afoot and it's, it's doing a lot of like class warfare kind of stuff, which is really interesting. So, yeah, that is interesting. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, we'll all probably be talking about Umineko when I'm finished it. I won't provide regular updates because it's going to be a long time. It'll probably take me about a month or two to finish. So. All right. Well, enjoy that. Hopefully it goes well you. and you come out the other side a changed person. Hopefully oh. for the better. Yeah, we'll see. Those stories get dark. <laughs> Well, they're, uh, they're dark. Uh, yeah, Pat? I don't know. They're, I'm finding it um, dark, but also um, dark in the in the good horror movie sense or good horror story sense of dark, where it's not. Some anime is like really mean in the way that it's dark and is like yeah. trying to be upsetting and trying yeah. to hurt your feelings, and that's something I fucking hate when horror does that. Um, so, and I don't think Higurashi does that. I think it has moments no. like we alluded to things with fingernails oh, and God. <laughs> stabbing. And those are really, you make a lot of faces and it's like, oh my God. Um, and you certainly care about the characters, but I'm not watching it getting depressed. Um, it's just interesting. So yeah, yeah I feel like it earns everything. It's, exactly. It's the yeah, thing yeah. With Higurashi. It is dark, but not pessimistic. Yeah, right. that's a good way to put it. I think that's the key. And I like horror that is good horror, in my opinion, is not pessimistic. Um, I think people mistake some very, there are some very popular pessimistic horror out there that people mistake for being really good. And I have pretty strong opinions to the opposition of that. Um, and so, you know, that's a classic, like Saw is the original Saw is a really great story of like, perseverance and the human and human ingenuity and spirit you know like that's what that's that's to me what good horror kind of does and i think higurashi does that for sure yeah. all right well allison you've also got this visual novel on here yeah so i want to talk about that so <laughs> i decided i was trying to decide whether i wanted to play the higurashi a visual novel or the umineko one and i went for higurashi first um so this is going to be a full this is going to be a thing where i'm trying to play that in an umineko i don't think i'll try to play it before like the show's finished or anything like i'm still going to watch the new season of higurashi um but i just knew that some of the arcs in the visual novels are different than in the show so i wanted to give that a shot. Um, and it's, it's been really interesting so far. I'm only a couple hours in, um, but it does a really good job of setting the atmosphere and the mood, which is, I think what the biggest, uh, draw of these are. And, um, uh, like it, 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 it's interesting seeing a lot of the side content too. Like there's one part where, um, I don't think it's very spoilery to say that there is, uh, a, a lot of the things that are um, kicked off in this overarching story are based off of this one initial um, murder and dismemberment. And one of the things that uh, that you do at the end of each like little individual chunk of story is that there's uh, extra bits that you can read um, that, that aren't 100% necessary, but are, are kind of more flavor text. And so there, there's some really interesting things where you're, you're reading this tabloid article and it gets really dark. And then suddenly you, you move to reading an, a separate a section of the tabloid and like the music changes, sound effects change. And it just completely is like kind of jarring, but in an interesting way. Um, 
And another one was reading uh, a uh, a letter written by the um, one of the like higher ups in the village that they're in. So you can you see a lot of the bias from that. So it, it, it's 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 really interesting writing. Um, from what I understand about the origin of this, this was this was started as uh, like just selling stuff at like Comic Cat, I think. Um, yeah, like just, on, just like on CDs. He was just like, yeah, I'm yeah. Just gonna go there, set up a booth, and sell these on CDs to whoever wants. Them. Right. It, it, the, it was the writer who just completely made it up. Like, it, it, it really just grew from the strength of its writing because it did not grow from the strength of its art. Um, yeah. But it's uh. Oh yeah. It, it's terrible. <laughs> it, but it's, it's endearingly uh, terrible. It is endearingly. Bad. There are a couple of times where I was like, I I, I switched. Um, so if you haven't seen it. The original art that he did is not good. It's like, like, he, like Alex said, is endearingly bad. So um, this new, uh, this release of it has updated uh, art. So, oh, but you can switch between them at will. So, um, so the advertised art on Steam then is the newer art. Yes. And, and it should oh, be. Oh, I see here the shift. Yeah. Wow. That is bad. Oh, it's awful. <laughs> the, the, I think I mentioned it during Sakura. Holy shit. That the, they're referred to as ham hands. Ham hands? Like, yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's uh, so bad. And yeah, there's there's I mean, the story's great, so I'm not. Uh, <laughs> it, I, right. I it's don't. Funny. The Sakonia yeah. art is what put me off of having any interest in that originally. Yeah. Um, like pretty, pretty heavily, but because I'm liking the story so much, I'm not saying that I'm going to like, I'm, this is not me declare I'm going to play it, but. And, th um, and that's him like, wow, you've really, uh, I mean, that's after years, <laughs> right? Sakonia is him improved. Uh, yeah. yeah. It's like, you've done a good job. You've worked really hard on that, huh? Uh, Higurashi's yeah. art is, uh, hot garbage yeah. at point. It, I love it. I love I it. I do it's too. So um, but but it's like but you but but you see like okay so this this whole franchise came from this one person selling this at Comic Cat like setting up a, his own booth and s since the art is clearly not the draw it's clearly on on the strength of the writing and I think yeah. that um, just being not very far into it you really get that sense of yeah the writing being so strong yeah. um, I, one, one thing worth noting uh on steam it was just within like the past month or two that it completely like the last arc is now up on steam like officially yeah. translated and everything so now you can actually get the entire the whole pack as, as right because they were they were they were releasing it piecemeal arc by arc on uh on steam which is you know that, that that's how they were able to get it out quicker but at the same time like you know, um, I was going to comment that I think I mean, I, it's a nice intro for me as someone who doesn't play a lot of the genre. Like I installed the the first chapter because it's free mm -hmm. and, and I would, I, the ability to go like chapter by chapter and say like, Oh, I want to play this one this weekend or whatever. It's kind of nice. Um, so because one thing that is tough about visual novels as someone who is like very much like on the outer edge of that, of interest in, the, in that is, um, they can be kind of expensive. Yeah. Um, and so. I wouldn't take away, I'm sure that they, you know, people work hard on them. So I'm certainly not suggesting that like they should sell their game and sell themselves short on it. And if people are paying it, who are into the genre, then good for them. But it's very hard for me to look at a $40 visual novel and go like, yes, I'd like to try this when I, it's, it's so hit or miss for me, my interest in the genre. Um, for and sure. I know I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna read through one that isn't engaging to me. So, um, uh, it's nice that with Higurashi, I can download the first chapter and check it out for free and then pay like right now they're on sale. The first couple chapters are on sale, pay like four, four to $8 to get the next chapter. It feels a little bit more mm -hmm. like checking out a manga, which mm -hmm. is, is cool. Um, I like, it. yeah. Yeah. Especially, I mean, especially since you look at like Umineko and like the, the first, uh, half of the arcs, the question arcs are $25 on steam and the, at answer arcs are 30. Um, I re if I remember correctly, I got, I got Umineko on sale and the, it was pretty, it was a pretty decent sale from what I remember. Um, but, but yeah, it is, is definitely a 
commitment. Whereas the first chapter here being free, that's, I think from, I, I was looking at it up on uh, how long to beat. And it looks like that's going to take you about like 11 or 12 hours. So you should really get a sense for yeah. the writing or if the, or if reading this is what, so, yeah, for sure that you want to do. And I, and I think $25 is pretty, it, that wouldn't, I have spent $25 on games that I've kind of gone like, eh, I don't know, and not felt terrible about it. So it, it's less, it's really more when it gets into the like $40 range that I right. start to go like, oh, I got to know I'm going to at least want to play through this whole thing before I want to spend that kind of money, you know? Right. And I mean, you'd want to have both the question arcs and the answer arcs, but at the same time, like you could, you know, put $25 into yeah. it and realize, Hey, it's not for me. And I don't really right. care to see the exactly. Um, that's, that's kind of, that's kind of why I think it's, it's, it's a little more palatable when you can buy, buy that stuff in, in parts. Yeah. So, All right. Anyways, uh, I, I'm sure that we'll have more discussions about Higurashi and Umineko in the mm. upcoming future. <laughs> I was never expecting us to go this hard on Higurashi. In I know. I'm so excited. This I is think, really fun. Yeah. I mean, I think that <laughs> so that to avoid like every week doing the check-in, I think it would probably be good to um, consider uh, doing a more Higurashi yeah. focused podcast after so, the, yeah. the, the I, new I, season. That wraps. seems. I, I think we probably won't be talking about it much. I think episode two of this particular season prompted us to have all these sure, chats because yeah. because it of the, sure stealth, the stealth drop <laughs> yeah um and i mean it'll be whatever 24 weeks until they are until 20, it's done 22 i guess yeah 22 yeah so oh, so sure. it'll it won't be until next year but i think when it wraps up we'll have to because i'm gonna so i'm happy. gonna i'm gonna finish the first season this week and hopefully finish the second season over the course of next week so i'll only be oh, a couple yeah. episodes behind simulcasting so. i have to say also to I have to say also, it's been really fun to see, see you experience it for the first time, Pat. Um, yeah. It's, it's yeah. a really interesting show that, um, if it's going the directions that it appears to be going, I would probably say is not like, I wouldn't be like, Oh my fucking God, it's the best show ever, but it's really well made. And I mean, of course it could take a hard left and blow my mind too, but it's the thing that's great about it is that it's just really well written and the characters are portrayed really well. So even if the story doesn't turn into some super, super, super crazy thing, it is, really solid and worth your time and enjoyable as long as you can handle some violence i mean that's that's the that's the thing but oh some explicit body horror in that show oh god <laughs> yeah yeah but i don't i guess if you're somebody who watches i am very wary of violence and body horror in anime because sometimes it goes way too fucking far for 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 me like it goes into like really disgusting shit this is like if you watch western horror you'll be fine um, it, it's, it's certainly bloody and violent and gory at times, but, and there's body horror stuff for sure. And there's some torture stuff in there for sure. But if you have seen saw, you will be fine. <laughs> um, it's no worse than anything that happens in that so far anyway, from what I've seen. I'm not saying anything. All right. <laughs> uh, uh, what was that Alex? No, I'm just neither confirming oh. nor denying. <laughs> okay well that has been your mandated visual novel anime update look forward to i don't know like a month from now when something else comes up probably that, that next seems about the right novel. time length the Nobody next visual novel, the next visual anime novel. whatever it is uh but Allison, you've got another game here on this list. Oh yeah, I don't need to talk about it very much, but I'm still playing a lot of Hades. Um, uh, eight wins in, and I thought I was like leading the pack here, but then Andre is like, "Oh, I have nine wins." But um, yeah, what can I say? Um, still, still, still really enjoying it. Still feel like I'm discovering a lot with it. Uh, there is like a whole ass. Uh, fishing mini game in it too Jesus. oh yeah i didn't there's a bunch of stuff i didn't know was in there. right so there, oh I'm, yeah i'm trying there. to learn how to play the liar in this game it is like whoa do you have do you have any uh companions allison god what 
Yeah, apparently yeah. there's companions. <laughs> holy shit! I didn't even know that. Yeah. Is it? Are yeah. you learning to play the Holy Liar de Hermel? <laughs> Which is the only liar I've interacted with. It's in it gets in Genshin Impact. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mentioned it last week, and everyone made the same faces. <laughs> but um, I that com- companions are a thing. Holy shit! Yeah, yeah. So the companions are like they're not. They don't actually like follow you the whole time or something. You don't have like a AI buddy going around, but you do. It gets another ability you can use a limited number of times to your runs, and you get them by advancing your relationship with certain people. I, I, so I got one to with Meg. advance my man. I need to like work on my relationship with these people, I guess. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and like, I'm worth another, to live so by. you get, you get quests to like, kind of resolve some like Greek myths. Like one of the ones we've talked about a lot is, mm-hmm. uh, you have Orpheus and Eurydice are in the game and eventually you get a quest. that's like, uh, reunite them. Yeah, and trying to get trying to get the sequence of conversations you need to have uh, to reunite them is kind of a pain in the ass because you can only have a one conversation with each person uh, per per death per run. Yeah, Uh, yeah, and because I have so many, like I'm I'm nine wins in like fifty fifty runs. And I've got so many quests and relationships built up that the game's like just giving me whatever it thinks is most important, which is like story stuff or that person's personal quest. Cause I need to talk to a third party to advance the Orpheus and Eurydice quest, but I'm not getting the, the dialogue I need from them, which is very uh, obnoxious. It's kind of frustrating. <laughs> yeah. And then even then I'll need to like do some runs until like the right thing happens. And then I have to try and find, like find the right chamber. And so, uh, you know, it's, there's a lot going on there, but I had a real good run tonight. So I'm, I, I've like very much fallen off that game cause I haven't had a ton of game time and it's all been spent on like doing my daily stuff in Genshin impact. I haven't even advanced the story that much and mm-hmm. then playing modern warfare with friends because I'm just like, going through the motions at night it seems like and part of it's because last weekend i worked all weekend so um i didn't really have much of a weekend but uh i would like to play more hades at some point and it's it feels like kind of a like i beat it once and it f- felt like kind of a iceberg moment where it was like there's a lot more to do here yeah and i don't know that i'm gonna have time to do it all before the end of the year um sort of thing uh so it was like maybe I take a I shelve it for a little bit and focus on some other stuff and then come back to it later. Oh, totally. And it, it, I think that it's it's something that you could definitely do that with. But it's it's yeah, l- like you said, it's, it's it's really like the iceberg of like oh, there is just so much mm-hmm. going on here. Yeah. And like the hidden aspects, I've got two of the hidden aspects for the weapons, like the spear and the bow and the shield. I've got three of them. Uh, yeah, it's, there's a lot in this game. Yeah. Uh, I I only have one of the hidden aspects, uh, for the spear and that is fucking hard. You have to get the spear one first. The bow one is very good. Okay. I need to like force myself through the, the spear one because it gives you a really significant health penalty, um, Mm. which makes it tricky, but it's, it's an interesting aspect. So So you don't have to use it, but mm. like just unlocking it gives you the ability to unlock the other ones. Oh, okay. Okay. So you just have to do the uh, requirements what they all have like unique requirements and people you have to talk to, to unlock them. Uh, and again, it's, it's like, uh, it took me a couple times talking to the person that I had to talk to for the bow to get that to prompt. So, you know, it'll happen. Just talk to everybody yeah, all the time. It'll happen eventually. Uh, and speaking of talking to people, Pat, I hear the last thing you did in your game was have a dialogue encounter. I got further than that. Um, oh, I spent, okay. I started, so, um, I, the original Baldur's Gate games were extremely formative for me. Um, the first Baldur's Gate game was the first game that I played 
uh, I think I played Tetris and Super Mario Land first on a Game Boy, but Baldur's Gate was very nearly the first video game that I ever played. Um, I played it with my dad um, when I was like five years old, five or six. Like I remember when we went and bought it, but it's one of my earliest memories, um, which may be a weird game for a five or six year old to <laughs> <laughs> enjoy, but I started reading very early. So um, I was able to kind of read and understand some of the stuff in those games early on. Um, and it was one of the early games that I played too. Uh, and then Baldur's Gate 2, same deal. I was a little bit older when that came out. And um, both of those were really, really important to sort of shaping my enjoyment of video games going forward. Uh, and so I've been pretty hotly anticipating Baldur's Gate 3. I've never finished Divinity, Original Sin, or Original Sin 2, but I've played them. I've done the thing where you start both of them over and over again. And mm -hmm. so I have a lot of uh, appreciation for the writing. Um, the pacing of those games is a little bit hard for me to get into from a, like, there's something about running around in RPGs that, when it's like running around and talking to people and you do it for like five or six hours, it's like hard for me to stay engaged for some reason, which is silly because yeah. that should be what those, I mean, you should be, have long sequences that's, of running around, but it's also interesting given how much you like disco Elysium. <laughs> yes, exactly. That's what I'm saying is it's a little odd for some reason, disco Elysium. You, and I'll tell you what it is. I know what it is. The thing that I appreciate, and this is relevant to, Baldur's Gate 3, if you haven't figured it out, which is what I'm talking about, is, and I'm aware that um, Divinity Original Sin sort of does this, but the thing about Disco Elysium is you make choices that are not just going through the dialogue tree. They are, I'm going to make a skill check here, and it's going to have a material impact on my options going forward. And that is why Disco Elysium is so compelling to me, because every encounter is a new it, i mean the dialogue is is as deep in a lot of ways as combat can be in some rpgs and so i think i just had not hit the point in divinity original sin one and two where the dialogue evolved beyond clicking through trees and that's what is sometimes exhausting for me as an adult when i was younger like morrowind is a game with a bazillion dialogue trees and i used to click through all those fine it didn't bother me but as an adult so there's something about that act of like, all right, click this tree. I want to ask about this. Let's go into the sub tree and click through and read these 10 pieces of dialogue and then go back and do it and do it 30 times with all these different characters. That is really exhausting to me. Like, I don't know why. Um, anyway, Baldur's Gate three is a really interesting take on computer RPGs, it is what Larian have done um, ha is they have taken Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition, which is the most recent edition of D&D, &D, and basically tried to one-to-one -one adapt it to a PC RPG, which is different than what they have done in the original Sin games. Those games are like their own system. And so they feel very much like... Um, they're almost closer in some ways to something like uh, fire emblem or something when you're in the combat, they're not like fire emblem. So don't, that's not what I'm trying to say, but they, they have like their unique video game systems that, that they, that they developed for it. Whereas Baldur's gate three and that it's causing some division because Baldur's gate three is a, I mean, you could read the D and D fifth edition rule book and basically skip the tutorials to an extent. Cause like everything you can see they surface all of the dice rolls. Um, everything is happening as if a dungeon master is explaining it to you and you're making choices. And it's really cool because it allows you to stretch the systems in a way that computer role-playing games haven't really done in ages. And you never really could do even in the Infinity Engine games. Um, so you can do things like try to jump from one place to another that you're not really... like who knows if you can get there or not. And if you make the role, you do it. And if you fail the role, you don't kind of stuff. And it means that like I had an early encounter where it was like, 
I I'm going to try to do a perception check to understand more about this thing. And I failed it. And it pops up on the screen with a 20 sided die. It says, here's what your target is. Click the roll button. You click the roll button, the die rolls and you either pass or fail. And like, it's very interesting the way that that stuff works. And they do a good job of not making you go like, shit, I should save scum this. It's more like you get different, results basically based on this stuff. Yeah, so cool. it, it works really well for me. I think a lot of people are going to be disappointed with the combat because th since original sin one and two were designed to be video games, they designed the combat systems to be very video gamey in that it's a lot of like, I have a wizard that can cast a fire spell and then I have another and, and I can cast a fire spell on this patch of oil that they've conveniently laid out to be beneath this monster's feet and then they'll catch fire. So there's a lot of that kind of environmental stuff, a lot of elemental stuff. Whereas this is much more, you are now in a Dungeons and Dragons fifth edition encounter. Mm. So it is like you are playing as a ranger who uses a bow, roll a 20 sided die. You're trying to roll a 14. And if you roll the 14, you will do damage. And so <laughs> tactics matter, but the dice rolls are really important and it is not the kind of game where you're popping, at least early on, you're not popping up abilities all the time. You're running up to people and attacking them. And I like that because that's kind of the roots of my gaming experience. So it doesn't bother me that I'm kind of like, Oh, this character's turn 80% chance to hit and they missed end of turn next character. Um, but I think it's causing some people who are more, divinity fans first who are not table because i play tabletop role-playing games too where i do this with friends every week and so i think it's kind of had a little bit of of met a little bit of derision from people who wanted more of a creative original sin 2 type take but i don't think that would have been as compatible with the setting because this is really a, a rpg setting um i would say story-wise so far it is fucking wild like <laughs> that game has a very good character creator. And then you, uh, in the opening cut scene, a mind flayer, which is like a walking squid person that does like crazy psychic stuff to people. You're on like a mind flayer ship, which is like a sentient things. living ship. Yeah. <laughs> and the mind flayer, you're like in a pod and a mind flayer comes in and puts a weird gross worm in your eyeball. And then it like crawls into your head. And, and it's the idea is like in three days, it turns you into a mind flayer. That's how they make more mind flayers. Mm -hmm. um, but in the meantime, you're still in control of yourself and you can like, you have some psychic ability and like, I won't get into too much about the, 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 the way it goes so that people can discover for themselves. But like early on, I made a dexterity check to remove a brain from a head that had had the top sawed off, like oh. in a surgical sense, it was real fucking gross. Um, <laughs> so sounds real fucking gross. I managed to succeed in the dexterity check to remove it. I don't know how much more gross it would have been if I had not cleanly peeled it out of this person's skull. Or if you'd did, failed that, that dexterity check. Did this like yeah. zoom in? Was it, did you get like an oh, up close and personal yes. look? Yes, <laughs> very okay. up close and personal. Very oh, up close okay. and personal look of the saw sawed off head and oh, of my character gently dexterous reaching his fingers around the inside of the brain and kind of <laughs> like sucking Ooh. it out of the no, head. Thank you. it is that's an interesting graphic. side effect of like the visual fidelity that we've gotten to with games where these games that have traditionally just been pulled out views like diablo or planescape like these divinity yeah. planescape or whatever uh baldur's gate where you're normally just like isometric third person but now they can just zoom in real close your yes. character can look really good yes. and <laughs> it's a very high fidelity gross. and it gets uh, weird after that with the brain and it's interesting and and i you know is, I don't it, wanna... is it like cinematic or are you choosing to zoom in here or uh, no. It, so the way the dialogue is very much like a Bethesda game in the way that it, it okay. or, or mass effect or whatever it zooms in for you and, and is kind of framing conversations in that way. Um, which is fine. It works fine for this. I was a little worried about that because 
I like the classic Infinity Engine sort of style that Pillars of Eternity does, where it remains zoomed out and you yeah. kind of see the scene as you're as they're talking. But in this case, it works because the visuals are generally pretty high fidelity. I will say that um, this is early access. I haven't mentioned that yet. I definitely recommend waiting on it if you if you are like wondering whether it's worth playing now. I think it's 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 it has the first act of the story and it feels like a full experience, but there's definitely like animation. I would assume that they're going to be taking a pass on. Cause like there was a couple of moments, cinematic moments where I was like, wow, this looks goofy. <laughs> this does not look like they are. This looks like placeholder animation to me. Mm -hmm. Um, and well, so, it, uh, it, it, it is early access. So. Yes. Yeah. And I'm not holding it against it because it's, it's very much early access. Um, and there's like whole races and classes that haven't been implemented yet right now. It just has very simple, classes and the which it may always have pretty simple classes because dungeons and dragons is obviously the like kind of fighter rogue ranger um wizard it doesn't have like shadow thief or whatever you know like that that kind of stuff is not present um but there are source books for dnd 5e that includes more advanced sort of um like almost final fantasy like jobs that you can spec into and i think this game is going to have some of that stuff later on right now it's it's pretty basic it doesn't even really have like you can't play an orc yet which i assume really? they will put orcs really in. no yeah it doesn't have it has githyanki oh uh, okay They're, those are like the the time space time traveling yes. orcs. Um, okay yeah they ride dragons and but shit. they look okay. more like aliens than orcs really um so they don't have noses no they have like yeah they have like weird I don't know, snake noses, yeah. kind of whatever. But you can play as tieflings, which is the other, which is what I'm playing as. It's the other beast race. But then it's just like humans, dwarves, halflings, and elves. Um, mm -hmm. And orcs should be in that game. I mean, half orcs and orcs are a big part of that lore. So they sh you should be able to play as one. I'm just, they just haven't implemented them yet. Um, uh, and so, the, yeah, I mean, it's, I think if you, what I, the reason I decided to go in on it is I've never done a, let me get a really early access ass early access game and check in with it and play it through its development. I've never really mm -hmm. tried that. And, um, I'm not sure how deeply I'll stay engaged with it through the period, but I was kind of like, you know what, I'm going to take a shot at it this time, even though, you know, maybe it would be a better experience to wait for 1.0, but I like Larian a lot. I know I'm going to buy the game eventually anyway. Um, it's full price and early access. So, more reason to wait if you're not sure, but, um, sure. it's cool so far. I'm excited to put some more time into it. Um, I've heard that your party is like total assholes all around. Like so they're, you're not, you're not people. making your party. They're pre -made. No, um, Baldur's gate. Historically you make your character and then the other characters, okay. uh, are, are like, they have stories and stuff. They have, they exist yeah, in the yeah. world. Um, in the Icewind Dale series, you make the whole party, but, in, okay. and, and that's always kind of why I preferred Baldur's Gate. Cause I like having the unique characters like in mass effect or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's the case here. And apparently they are complete shit bags, which is very funny. And <laughs> I'm interested to see that they're like, if you do nice things for people, they're like, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> and <laughs> that is, that is a nice sort of change of pace from, Baldur's Gate has always been kind of, um, I don't want to say morally gray cause that's cliche, but it has always been, um, it's not necessarily a series that's about being a, a, a shiny hero. Um, and to see them lean into that is, 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 is enjoyable. Uh, the, the two characters I have met so far are definitely kind of assholes. Um, although I suspect one of them maybe didn't make it out of uh, the I thing that happens in the beginning, but, uh, I'm looking at the website cause I was trying to see if there's a roadmap for what their early access stuff is going to look like. Uh, it does not appear to be. No, uh, the, it's it seems like they're just adding the story like the, as it is completed and yeah. then adding some more character creation options like classes mm -hmm. and races. That's, that's yeah. my impression. And then fixing bugs, obviously. It's also been cool watching them talk about how like, oh, this is wildly successful. We yes. didn't expect all of this response. Yep. Uh, <laughs> what are, how do we handle this? Because they've been doing yeah. this since Original Sin. Like Original Sin 1 yeah. was kickstarted and that sort of started off the Larian Renaissance. 
um, was the Kickstarter for original sin being really successful. And that when original sin first came out, maybe it wasn't in early access. I think it was though, either way. I don't, no, if original sin, original sin two definitely was yes, but I, I original sin one might have come out as a 1.0 release. However, they ultimately made a ton of changes to original sin one and re-released it as the enhanced edition, and th- it was like a night and day reception. The, f- the originally no pun, originally original sin one was kind of like. Oh, it's good if you're, it's got great writing and it's good if you're really hardcore into CRPGs, but it was kind of a mostly positive sort of situation. And then they took a bunch of feedback and re-released the enhanced edition and it put it over as like, oh my God, this is one of the best RPGs ever at the time. And then original sin two, they just did a full early access thing for it. And then they still did an enhanced edition a year after they put out original sin two. And they did do early access for original sin one. Gotcha. So they're I, very... I played the, like the original release of it like after it was out of early access i didn't mm-hmm. play the enhanced version but i never finished it either i got real close though it's, would, you, um, would you would you say it was a night and day difference or a ice wind dale difference <laughs> nope 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 okay. Okay. Is this nope you tried, tried. It's <laughs> but anyway did you it's did you try it, it's, well, uh, i tried i don't know i don't know if you tried <laughs> like I, mm. well, the thing at least i want at least it was baldur's gate <laughs> the thing i want to get across before we move on is baldur's gate 3's intro is super fucking wild and like it has all the weird stuff but then like basically the opening area is you're on this mind flare ship as it's hurtling across the sky with dragons like attacking it and literally like sticking their heads inside and like biting off pieces of the ship and Rad. it's it's fucking yeah, awesome cool. why, why are you selling me on this game it's, I know. you're saying like, like oh you don't need to play i'm like but what if i did play it yeah that's how i got here <laughs> um, i i have been missing playing like D and because my D and D friends uh moved away the but... only counterpoint i will make to you playing it andre because I think I'll play it eventually too, is that it's not currently eligible for game of the year. That's true. Yeah. That's, the, only, that's the only, that's the waste, only counterpoint. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The only oh, thing well, I, I still got wasteland three going and I'm yeah, really I enjoying think I'm going to wait till uh 1.0, but I'm you're, you're selling me on this. Yeah. yeah I was like, I, I definitely think too, you don't need to, play the first two games to understand Good or enjoy this now. one i'm going to go back and play them again next year i think because i love them and i'm nostalgic for them and i haven't played them in 10 10 ish years 10 15 years um so i've forgotten a lot of i mean i don't even remember the story of what happens in bg2 i just remember that it was fucking rad um so uh they're really good games and if you have an interest in but they're also like D and D three third edition. I mean, mm-hmm. they're like second edition. I heard for like the first I one. Th- right? I don't think wrong. I don't think Maybe. that's right. I'm pretty sure it was okay. third edition, but I could be wrong. Anyway, point is current D and D is like, you want to do that? Here's a difficulty. Roll this die. It's very, I don't want to say simple yeah. because there's a lot of math that goes into it, but the, they've basically like, there's just like, there's this like funnel of math that you come to understand over time. And then yeah. the actual, the actual action point is like you roll one die and look at its result compared to a number. So it's very approachable. Yeah. Old D and D is like, do you want to do a thing? Okay. So you need to roll two of this die and one of this die and then cut their numbers in half. And then that provides you with a modifier that you'll then apply to a roll of 2d eight. But, um, you're also trying to like, you roll the 2d eight and then it's like, okay, so you've succeeded, but now you need to check the degree by rolling 2d four. And it's just very like, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Things like mm. back and, yeah. uh, um, you want your to, to, to the better the armor, the lower the armor class on it is into negatives, <laughs> which doesn't huh. make any sense. And it's not even as simple as, oh yeah, negative to the enemy's hit roll. That's not even what it means. It's it's a lot. So I would say that's the bigger barrier. If you can't, if you're interested in the story of BG one and two, which are great stories, watch somebody else play it. <laughs> and, and I might do that on. honestly. Um, I yeah, I don't I don't have any of that nostalgia for playing it so um range touch uh is a um let's play group that is cameron kunzelman um and uh 
oh, what what is what are their names? Michael Lutz. Michael Lutz oh. and um they don't put their names in their Twitter profiles. I only Fred, know them on Twitter. Fred, Fred Durst. We'll say no, that. not Fred. Oh God, I don't want to watch Fred Durst play Baldur's Gate. Anyway, <laughs> I, I do. do. I <laughs> do. <laughs> look, only if there's someone there to punch him in the face all the time. Um, uh, look up Range Touch on Twitter. They did. They did a really good let's play of I think both Baldur's Gate games, but at least Baldur's Gate two, and that's a great way to experience that that game now because it's definitely. <laughs> kind of unless you like unless you like me like to dig into incredibly mind-boggling systems that are you wonder how the fuck did anyone ever come up with this okay, it's it's better to watch it so let's say fred durst does a baldur's gate playthrough and every time he rolls a dice he just starts going roll and roll and roll and yep yeah uh, eject yeah. that man into the sun <laughs> <laughs> the the okay. hearing about I'm... that that story about the late great Van Halen and Fred Durst. Uh, oh, mm-hmm. there was like a um, God. There was they had a feud, and apparently Van Hattie Van Halen pulled a gun on Fred Durst at one point. <laughs> oh yeah, was it because he took one of his guitars or something like that? Yeah, something like that. Fred Durst yeah. is an okay. asshole. <laughs> anyway, well, listen to sure. Deftones instead. Deftones R.I.P. Is good. to R.I.P. to Eddie Van Halen. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, all right well that's Baldur's gate <laughs> yeah uh, i do like how the takeaway from Baldur's gate is r.i.p van halen and fuck fred durst <laughs> yes yes <laughs> that's how i like all my stories to end <laughs> all right well that 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 was a journey from at okay well now we're here and i'm here to tell you about this little game called solitaire have y'all okay. heard of it? Solitaire, no, anybody? No. no, to explain it, what is it? All right, so, like, Aggressive. you got a deck of cards, right? You got a deck of cards. Mm-hmm. But you got nobody around. It's just you. Oh, shit. You got, like, an empty table. You got nothing. It's is just there a you, game you can empty play room. With that? There is. So this, and it's this game so... called Solitaire. And it's like, you know, you're putting the cards in order, like, ace to king. You gotta, But you got to stack them up, and they're all, like, shuffled in a weird way. It's like a puzzle. So it's like go fish. It's it's like go fish against yourself. Go fish yourself. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. There's our podcast title. Uh, so yeah, okay, but we all know what solitaire is. I, I really pulled uh, yeah, that one over. I gotta say, I was like, do I say this? <laughs> do I not say it? I was thinking it's on the it, table. so I'm glad that you said it. Because yeah, no, no, it's it's good. So what we were uh, thinking. So. The Solitaire Conspiracy is a yeah. new, unique take on Solitaire, where you've got... Like, okay, I, I think it's is, unique. This, this isn't actually a, a legit question. Is it like Klondike Solitaire? Yes. I don't know. No, I'm about to explain not. what it is. Okay. Klondike uh, Solitaire I don't like know what Klondike Solitaire. solitaire. I don't know the difference. It, I know it's, it's Spider okay. Solitaire. It's a Mike but... Bithell game. Is, is, yeah, it's Mike oh, Bithell game. Yeah. Thomas okay, was alone. Okay. John Wick Hex. Uh, uh, the, was... the Subsurface Circular. The other one. So, uh, the solitaire conspiracy is the way it's the way the solitaire is set up is basically down the middle. You've got your four spots for the aces, and then on either side of those four like middle bits, you've got the cards divided in like two piles, and you can see all the cards at all times. Mm-hmm. So you've got like the stack on left side, right side, four down, and then in the middle you put the aces, and then you go two up to king. Uh, where the solitaire conspiracy begins to differ from traditional solitaire is each suit has like a special ability that is activated from the face cards. And this is going to get very complicated very quickly. Uh, In solitaire, normally you can only put like a card on a matching card, like on a, like a card that is below, right? I don't remember how to play solitaire. So if you got like a five, you can only put on a six. Yes. Is uh, that normal? Of the opposing yeah. suit. Yes. Depending on the rules. Yes. yes. Yeah. 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 So in this one, you can put your card on any card that is higher. So I could put a five on a nine and like build out oh. that way. You, you don't want to do that because like, higher? then you're just like cutting off. 
yeah so i yeah like well so i can put my five like on the outside where i'm moving cards around to like shuffle down to lower spots so i've got like a like a 10 a seven and a six like in a row and then i can put like a three on top of that six to make the row longer and reveal like an ace and then put that ace in the middle uh it's then, very different get... from klondike solitaire yeah, yeah like the, 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 the layout like. the card layout is extremely different because in yeah. klondike solitaire you have you have panels that you can save cards in to reveal more cards from the deck but mm -hmm. you don't have oh yeah no, yeah this... so yeah all the cards are visible to you and are in like the piles in the stacks. Right. So you're trying to uncut, you're trying to yes. like move cards around to get to the aces and the other cards. It's and more once of a you put puzzle. An ace in, yeah. 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 Once you get the ace in the middle, it activates the face cards of that suit, which then have special abilities. It, yeah. It like actually, they could. Sorry. Yeah. I oh, yeah. it, so, sounds, uh, it sounds a lot like golf solitaire if you've ever, ever played no that. i haven't I've played, played that but yeah so, and, yeah uh, I, I've, I've played that and I, it sounds similar yeah so then you've got the uh so say i don't remember what's called it it's the solitaire conspiracy all the suits are like based on like member like groups within a secret organization so you've got one group that goes in and when you put the like the face card on top of you can put a face card on any basically spot if it's powered up and one group will like blow up that uh row or that like stack and then just redistribute the cards randomly onto the other stacks or like it's going to shuffle them or it's going to put them all in order from lowest to highest or highest to lowest and stuff like that um so you're managing all these abilities and trying to you know play solitaire uh it's a really interesting unique take on solitaire that really makes you like have to think differently if you're not used to playing different types of solitaire and the inclusion of the abilities really um makes it tricky because there are eight possible teams and but you're only ever using four at once at most. And you're going through like a story mode that is just giving you random like missions with different, um, different team groups. So you never know what four team or what four suits you're going to have. So what abilities you're going to have and whether they'll work well together or not work well together at all. Interesting. Also, this is an FMV game. Oh, sick. Yeah, starring, starring Greg Miller. Greg Miller. <laughs> what? Yes, he's the main character that talks to you. I saw this in the trailer. Yeah, okay. it's a like pardon. I, that's yeah. I actually just bought it because I. That's actually the main I, reason I want to play it. It's ten bucks. Of, it's it's good solitaire. Yeah. Okay, it, I, you're you're selling me on this because this sounds fun. It's hard it's, to explain, but yeah. like it's once also, you start playing, you'd be like, oh, I get it. It's yeah, also, I, I think that's the good thing with a lot of those kind of solitaire card games is that it it, it looks like a lot, but then you, you figure it out. But. It's also like as long as a movie, too. It's not, yeah, from what I understand, it's, it's like an hour and a half, two hours. Oh, because, perfect. Yeah, because they, they, on the store page, they talk about like, what's stopping me from asking for a refund after I finish this game? And it, they talk about like, oh, well, in the past, we've released these short games and we found that we 92% of people keep them. So, you know, we, we just trust that our fans tend to like to reward good game design. Um, awesome. It does and have a skirmish mode, like, right? Yeah, it's got multiple like modes that you could keep coming back to if you want yeah. to play like a different take on solitaire other than yeah. just like standard windows or phone solitaire. Uh, because and it you can do like kind of like a wave based thing where you're like timed and you're trying to solve things fast and they they increase the difficulty and then there's like the pick your team and try to you know try and best yourself and solve things quickly and all that kind of stuff i just want two hours of greg miller yelling at me portraying a character in an fmv game because no like i was already thinking hmm, this sounds pretty good and then and then you mentioned that the main actor was greg miller and I, I was like ooh. i like him as a person but sometimes when i listen to him on podcasts there it always hits a point where i'm just like man shut the fuck up because i don't agree with something he says <laughs> which is a very like it's a very like banal like it's never i've never had a like <laughs> like yeah. fuck this guy thing uh but uh it, him just talking at me in an fmv game sounds really fun <laughs> it's it sure does it's 
it's funny because he's you know he's like super spy but he's like man i'm fucking i'm i'm locked out of the system i need you to do the stuff and uh yeah it's it's silly uh it's it's good fun and you know it's a it's a nice way to spend an evening or two you know depending on how much solitaire you want to play and they do ramp you up in a nice way where they start you with only like one team like okay here's how the how how, uh, here's how it works here's how the abilities work and then they slowly stack up like okay here's a second team a third team a fourth team stuff like that so if well, I just bought it, so... If we're done, I'm going to play it after the podcast is done. If we're done with that game, I have a, I have a, I have a tweet that I need to read. Okay. This is not really breaking news, but... Uh, so, 35, one minute ago... It's not 35 seconds anymore. John Cena tweeted... <laughs> you can't see me. My respect for this group continues to grow. Always give back always credit, stay humble, work hard, listen, appreciate, and acknowledge those who help you at cheers, cheers. Hashtag BTS forever. A class act (laughs) hashtag. We are not seven with you. (laughs) Okay. All right. I mean, sure. It's an army. You you know, it is, it is appropriate that the Marine would join army. (laughs) <laughs> or very inappropriate depending on who you ask yeah yeah true. i just i'm sorry i was i i wasn't even like on twitter to ignore the conversation we were having i was literally switching to it and then closing the tab and i saw this john cena tweet it was like bts what <laughs> anyway okay. he might have been hacked but uh no because it reads like a john cena tweet that is true. that that man that is how that man communicates with people <laughs> what if oh my god what if wrestlemania john cena comes out and bts performs his theme and he raps with the rap monster what if what if i mean i don't want to support the wwe at all but what if bts wrestled in the royal rumble i think is what is the real <laughs> question don't hurt those sweet boys. <laughs> yes, agreed. I mean, I don't want them to risk injury, but also they're very athletic, so <laughs> uh, they probably, all right. They probably, do a, they probably do a mic drop. I mean, they would have they would they would have to wear headset microphones the whole time and then they could I, take them off at the You end. know, I don't think they could pick the Miz up. All five of them together? Sure they could. Oh yeah, sure. Maybe yeah. They could they could do a mic drop or all five of them. I don't even. That's not even right. But um. But but if the entirety of them, if they were all in the ring at the same time, they could absolutely. I mean, that's the joke, right? Is that they would they all like, enter as like number six or yes. something? <laughs> yeah. And then they're the last ones to be eliminated by Roman Reigns. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> then Roman Reigns' life is ruined by Army. I hope so. Uh, that's not true. What am I saying? <laughs> I like Roman Reigns. He seems like a good dude. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, all right. Well, that's going to do it for our game talk for this week. Uh, come back next week where I have somehow have gotten deep into Baldur's Gate, despite telling myself I will finish Wasteland 3 first. Just it is what it is uh i wish that game let's move like, on to news clicked with me more i played it for like two hours and it just didn't mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i it, could tell that really it was good me, but but mm-hmm. it just wasn't hitting for me for some reason hopefully it, it took a little bit for me to like really get into it yeah. but i'm enjoying what i'm finding now like the humor setting for me yeah. it might not hit for everybody but for me it works uh now let's move on to news and this isn't on our list and this has been kind of happening for a while now, but since we're on the topic of WWE, I'm reminded of it. Yo, fuck the WWE taking yeah. away their talents, Twitch like platforms oh my and God, like, their yeah. YouTube channels and saying like, we're going to control these and you'll get like part of it, but it's going to come out of like, it's basically going to make up some of their pay. So basically it's what? basically what, it's like tips. Okay, I, I, I don't or... follow wrestling at all, so I hadn't heard of that, but that is some serious it, bullshit. It's, it's their, I can't remember what it's called, but my understanding is basically like their residuals and stuff. Like it basically goes into that or something. Yeah. I don't know. It's like there was a company honestly, that was that. doing, like, was it DoorDash? Was like when you tipped, it just came out of, it just made it so DoorDash paid the driver less if you didn't, if it like, 
covered only yeah. part of their like minimum wage or whatever is basically the same idea it's it's like the way tips, garbage. yeah yeah the i i am shocked that anyone still works at the wwe to be frank like yeah the, uh, other than the fact that i guess that they're putting on remote shows i mean if it weren't they i don't i don't know that i don't see how they could get away with this if there weren't covid happening because there's enough independent promotions yeah. out there you would think that a lot of these people could go make a living it might not be the same kind of living but make a living mm -hmm. doing work for as an independent and it is just they are just like one of the most trash entertainment companies in a world full of trash entertainment companies it's incredible that wwe continues to sink lower and lower like yeah. they have no integrity whatsoever as an organization and it's it's like i feel really bad for the people who work there in like production roles and stuff who it's just their job and i mean there are some fantastic people who work there yeah the exactly. company itself just fucking eat my ass and 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 like they're so bad to the people that work for them. <laughs> they're yeah. just so bad to them. It is, it is shocking to me how it, little they care about the people who, who, who make them money. Yeah. It's a really like, I don't know. They have more leverage than ever right now, but yeah. also they're in a more precarious position than ever right now too. So I just hope as soon as, as soon as the wrestlers themselves can start to make a living elsewhere that they just jump, start jumping ship faster at yeah. a faster rate yeah. i mean they have been jumping ship but do it do it faster but there's also only so many lifeboats out there you know uh, yeah but i mean depending on not i mean maybe it would run into the same problems but there's places places like aew potentially can keep getting bigger so oh yeah but the, you know they also have their own stuff that they've been doing so it's not like everyone can leave and you know not everyone no i leave, yeah but totally yeah, it's it, I would it just, is like, you know, they're big names and if they just, you know, there's this mass exodus of talent into like the indie scene, then that screws over a lot of people and it, you know. Oh, I know, but I don't, it's I complex guess, complex and shitty. I guess what I'm getting at is I don't see how people are getting screwed so hard by WWE oh, yeah. right now. And I mean, also on the back end too, we don't hear about it as much because it doesn't relate to the, to the wrestlers themselves as much, but they do all kinds of shit to their, their employees internally oh, yeah. too. And, um, so I, as much as it would f fuck over a lot of people, people are getting fucked over so hard by them right now that I'm kind of like, nah, I would love to see them just crumble. Um, it would, yeah. it would suck for people, but also <laughs> it's the kind of their business practices should result in them failing. That's like how the system is yeah. supposed to work because they're yeah. so awful to the people that work for them. Yep. All right that's the that's our yearly fuck wwe chat and uh now time to talk about our regularly scheduled news there's some more ps5 news this week a couple if do a couple different avenues uh we got some japanese youtubers going hands-on with the console playing some games they did not get to see the ui this is weird <laughs> Yeah, and there was something else they they couldn't use the share button. That kind of makes sense that, to yeah. me. Yeah, but but uh, yeah, because that it may not be connected to anything right now. Like it yeah, could be like but... placeholder UI that is mm -hmm. in place because there's no infrastructure like launched for yeah. that yet. Yeah. Um. So that's less yeah. weird to me than not being able to but, see the UI. Yeah. But yeah, the main thing was you they had like a pre-built like thing that was like here's how you use the controller and now here's astro's playroom or whatever game they were playing yeah uh so that i uh, didn't seem like anything that crazy came out of there other, other than like the other than the the thing was like the size of that that guy's whole body yes. so they're gonna say the mysterious nut the, oh, that's, that's, that was whatever <laughs> i've seen uh, bigger nuts than that uh, oh, um, no. uh, what? <laughs> the, Just I don't over here. I don't feel like there's much more to, I mean, it's a console that plays video games. I don't know. They, like, if, one, yeah, one thing, I don't know if this counts as separate news, but they also did that video with the full teardown. Yeah, they did the full teardown, which is cool. Um, I love that. That, that, that was, was awesome. Actually, that was that was really cool, and it also showed just how um, 
easy it would be if you wanted to like do maintenance on it yourself. Like they actually showed themselves <laughs> pulling off the warranty sticker. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, they also yeah. like that was, you know, like they were doing the teardown. So they, of course they have to pull off the warranty sticker, but they were pulling out the, uh, or, you know, they're like, here's the vacuum spot where you can vacuum out the dust. Yeah. That was awesome. And, uh, and so it did answer some questions like, how do I, what's the storage expansion deal? And that is you can put in a PCIe NVMe, PCIe 4 NVMe drive to that, uh, to the slot inside. You have to open up one of the big slidey wings or whatever on the side. To yeah, they like snap off. I think they yeah. call them fins. Uh, I don't know. Uh, whatever. Uh, it's just shark ass motherfucker. Um, so yeah, so you can put in an, an extra drive, which means the 865 gig drive that is the default that comes installed uh, is soldered to the motherboard, which does yeah. raise, I don't know, maybe some concerns about like longevity and like if that fails, it shouldn't, but if mm -hmm. it did, you had a problem, what? then suddenly... They also showed the board, like they showed the PCB and everything. Yeah. And the way that is set up, I, it, I, other components would fail before that. And it makes yeah, sense that... why it's soldered there when you actually look at how the board is yeah. set up and how like, um, the SSD controller is set up because they actually specifically showed the controller, uh, mm -hmm. from, from like the hardware sense, the hardware controller. Yeah. And it's proximity to where the actual SSD is and where that SSD yeah. is also in proximity on the board to like memory mm. and also CPU. So it yeah. was actually pretty cool that they showed that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I think it's... just the big thing is, and like, it's, I guess like with a computer, it's more of an issue, like with a console, it's whatever, everything's backed up in the cloud and it's all like, you know, all you have is game yeah. saves. Uh, and, and if or, it's under know, warranty, it then Sony has pretty good warranty support from my experience. Um, oh yeah. It's more just okay. like, you know, if you lose something cause it fails or whatever, but that, that would be years down the line. Yeah. And I, I thought that the general like design of it was really quite solid from, from looking at, I don't know as much about board layout as you do, Alex, but my impression of it was that it was really smartly put together in the, the ways that yeah. it seems like it being big gives it some pretty solid airflow um that heat sink, heat sink is yeah the heat sink is massive. awesome it's so it's cool huge. i love like, yeah, huge yeah. ass heat pipes <laughs> you put that on the back of a boat and you'll just go <laughs> yeah. like that thing is going to be quiet yeah From yeah what they it looks showing, like it it looks like it's gonna be very quiet and uh, they liquid metal the, the, yeah the liquid metal is their um uh, the the connection the contact point between the heat sink and the CPU, so like you're and, not going to have to replace that. Anytime. Yeah, because it won't dry out um, the way that it can. You will have to uh, protect John Connor though. <laughs> yeah, that's the that's Keep what's John gonna Connor is, away from that thing. The liquid metal is going to go out through the heat pipes, through the vacuum holes, and all these different PS fives, and meet like the Iron Giant yeah. in one spot, and then turn into the 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 Terminator. If I was a movie executive in the year 2020 and I, I would be like liquid metal, you say, let's have a Terminator come out of a PlayStation five. <laughs> it's yeah. the next movie well, is like John Connor playing a PS five. And then suddenly PS five comes out into a Terminator. Uh, I, I would name my PS five max. <laughs> I don't know if that I, reference makes sense to anybody here, but no. uh, or Wolfie. Nothing. No Terminator Two fans no, in the no, house. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. You know, I, yeah. You, you mm -hmm. know when he calls him and he's all like, "Oh, how's Wolfie doing?" Yes, I, I know. Uh, I understand the reference. Dead. I just okay. don't support it. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and the last bit of PlayStation Five news this week is they finally came out and gave some more concrete details on backwards compatibility. There's like eight games I can't play. Yeah, yeah. and it's it's Which most of the games are kind of like And okay, I think one of them cool. was like one of them's a uh, the Afro Samurai game that was real bad and got like canceled yeah. basically after release. <laughs> One of them so, is an old touring trophy game. Yeah, I, I like one never of them was heard like a of these games. Game. 
Yeah. Yes, one was right. it We Sing, I think. We Sing, yeah. Uh, so it's like it's it's like oh, oh you, I, I was looking at that list. I'm like, that's 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 fine. I'm out here worried that like, oh man, am I gonna if I want to get back to Grand Blue Fantasy versus, is that not gonna play on the PS5 because it's not a Sony <laughs> first party game? Then <laughs> no need to worry. <laughs> they have they have said that like some stuff might encounter bugs or not yeah, run 100 yeah. percent right, but right. I imagine but newer I mean, stuff will be fine. Yeah. I imagine if anything it would be like weird, obscure, like maybe indie stuff uh, from like early in the generation. Uh, but yeah, hard to say. But when they said 99% of games, they meant they 99%. really meant it. We yeah. did miss one important piece of the teardown video. It also has weed oh. storage, the PlayStation five. When you take the, in the little, the little foot. Oh, put your weed in there. <laughs> right. Okay. Oh uh is that why everyone was so happy about the design of that thing yeah i think so okay there's a very uh, funny i think it was steve kim but there was a very funny video again i think it was steve kim posted to twitter that played the teardown in reverse and mm -hmm. it had subtitles that were like <laughs> the musings of this guy hand making the <laughs> one millionth ps5 <laughs> it was extremely <laughs> funny it was extremely funny and he goes oh you could put your weed in here <laughs> Uh, actually this one more thing about the teardown reminds me because those sides snap off, how soon do you think it'll be before we start seeing 3d printed like replacements? Like um, day one immediately. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What would you want 3d printed on the side of your PlayStation five? Huge dog. <laughs> Brendan Fraser on one side and Honey on the other side does not to honor your character. My Final Fantasy character, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, huge dong, I see. Yeah. How, about, how yeah. about you, Andre? What do you want on the side of your shaped? Side? Not just like a not just like a, the standard <laughs> wing with with something <laughs> printed on it, but just yeah, to make no, it so complete. Yeah, no, you want like just like a bad dragon TV. dildo. Yes. Yeah. No, oh, what, what, no, what you want is you want it to be one contiguous dildo. So like. The left side, it's like, is like the I don't like and it's Steve part of the chest. arrow through the head. I don't like the use exactly. of the term dildo here because we're not talking about a a a a, a, a um, no no. This, device, is no. no. this is just a piece of no. This is just a piece of art. Yeah. Okay, yeah. and it's yeah. nothing sexual yeah. about it. <laughs> it's just so, a piece of but, art. But yeah, but yeah you could do it uh, like the the arrow <laughs> through the head, but just like a dick sticking <laughs> through the PS Five. Exactly, it's massive. It, it, real question: Are the is the idea here that the, that those fins are just dust covers? Then, I, or, I guess. I yeah. I mean, well, it needs an outside. Well, <laughs> it just seems like it would be a lot smaller if it didn't have those enormous fins on it. So, like, is it I don't know a bad they, thing if I take them off and put them away and then hide it? I don't <laughs> know. The dust will get in. I don't know if they're affecting airflow either. That's what I mean. That's kind of what I'm curious about. It's fine. I mean, it's not, I don't need an answer right now, but it'll be interesting to see when it releases if like it's viable to one run it in a ventilated area without those fins on it because yeah. the thing is fucking huge, and <laughs> anything <laughs> to save a little bit of room would be worthwhile. But it may also be that the foot has to have a connection point on the wings. I don't know. Yeah. So, oh yeah, they also showed that stand. By the way, that's what I mean. Yeah, when I say the foot, which but comes the, with the, uh, yeah. things, yeah. and you have to use it. it. Yeah. there's no yeah. whether it's horizontal or not you have to use it yeah. but, but hmm. <laughs> a little weird but, but okay but but andre what would you put on on your your vanity playstation 5 side player oh well, i i didn't even think of this um how about how about allison then for <laughs> until mm -hmm. then <laughs> repeat that put j-hope oh. from bts yeah, what, what <laughs> you would put on your vanity ps5 wings oh mm, mm, i am like Could I make it, make the sides really, really big so it's like a weird misshapen X-wing? Oh yeah, that'd be cool. I have I have a real and better answer that's not vulgar. Um, I want the sure. grimoire from Near. That's what I want. I want it to. I want. I want it to look like that. And then I want a little speaker plugged in that makes it talk and call me like a piece of shit every time I start it. <laughs> Like how he's always, he's a huge asshole to you throughout that game. And it's very good. 
turn it into like the Sydney opera house or like some modern architecture. It's like sitting on its, you know, like in the horizontal <laughs> yes, position and then the top is just the Sydney opera house. <laughs> it's modern art. Sony should totally sell face plates. And they don't, they don't need to. No, it'd be fun. Are you, put, are you putting Goku on yours? That's too easy. All right. <laughs> you, could, you could do Aren't like a, maybe a Shenron like coming up out like Dragon Balls and Shenron maybe that'd be pretty funny because uh, there are so many options because of like the the multiple you know, orientations but yeah that, that'll be fun to see I bet people get real creative with that it's uh, almost as big as a PC tower so you know get almost. into case culture yeah uh, yeah, I, there are PC cases smaller than that. Yes. So. <laughs> oh, by far. Yeah. Anyway, uh, let's see. Next up, more Sony news. Ghost of Tsushima has a new patch coming up, which will introduce the multiplayer Legends mode and give you the ability to pet dogs and recruit them, I guess, Get and the have them me. as allies. But only a new game plus, which is bullshit. That is very weird. So, so I don't want to be a dick because I think Ghost of Tsushima is fun. Who the fuck is playing new game plus in that game? That's true. Like I, <laughs> that is a one and done. Want to platinum it? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's it's. I mean, it's well. What if I told you you could have a huge fucking army of dogs if you do? I don't know if that's enough for me. I didn't even get past the first like region. I got bored oh, before I even you. made it to the second region. There are always people who are playing like New Game Plus in these. It's games. true. It's always uh, just, yeah. so. It's just I I didn't even realize it had a New Game Plus. When I saw it had a New Game Plus, I was like, why? <laughs> <laughs> Well made game. Yeah. It's 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 Wait, good. It's solid. Yeah, I don't think it's, it's like a good game, but it's just like yeah. I, I I had the same thing happen to me too, where I was just like, I was like, oh, this game is cool, and then I got bored pretty quickly. Yeah. But did you say that they're adding some kind of multiplayer? Yeah, yeah, I yeah. I never it's like a that. four player like co op. Like you fight demons, I think. Yeah, I it's know. like fantasy. It's 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 so you fight like only a spirit and... dog. You so can it's have like, yeah. It's like a horde mode. It's like it uh, seems more like Left 4 Dead or something where you're moving through uh, levels and yeah. fighting stuff with probably it's probably not it's probably just environments from the game but yeah you, and I think there's even like progression stuff where you play it's class based and you level up and maybe even get new equipment or something it sounds cool but I don't see why I would engage with that when there are so many other multiplayer things right now to play like i don't it's neat it, that they added it but yeah it's a value it's game. got two player story missions and four player survival missions as well okay. as a raid huh. it's weird yeah they're almost framing it like it's some kind of service game thing but it's like weird, yeah. it's too slight to be a full service experience thing you know like i don't know it's it's very strange um, yeah, I but I mean, the game's fun to play. So I, I, I never played it, but w so that's all cooperative uh, multiplayer. Yeah. Do you think that game would benefit from uh, competitive no. multiplayer? It, I don't think so. No, it's it's the gameplay. It's not okay. deep enough <laughs> from mean, a. It, I mean, it's good, Assassin's, but the Assassin's Creed multiplayer was fun when they had it, like the competitive yeah. stuff. But yeah, it wasn't great, but it was neat. It's like, be like similar. Brotherhood? Yeah. yeah, but the yeah, AC cool. multiplayer is so different than the way the game were like the AC multiplayer is like hide and seek basically. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's it's you yeah. don't get into fights, open fights in it. Like you can't mm -hmm. take your swords out yeah. and fight each other. And I, I, that's like I know that there's stealth stuff in Ghost of Tsushima, but it's the the combat would it would need to be a factor, and I just don't think that it is really. I mean, then you I end mean, up with something akin to like. A, what uh, the the for honor yes which i think is great but um i guess you could have the stance changes be maybe an interesting wrinkle for yeah. a pvp mode but i oh, yeah. would just say anyone interested in that should play for honor because for honor is still very good yeah. and they or, continue to support it so or if you want a multiplayer competitive multiplayer game with stance changes play jedi knight 2 jedi outcast 
That's always a good decision. And I think that's on switch too. So or Neo two for something more recent. <laughs> it has competitive multiplayer. Uh, oh, Neo. No, no, okay. I didn't No, No, sorry. Just stance changes. Um, but yeah. All right. That's uh, ghost of Tsushima. Uh, more on the Sony front. Their launch lineup just got a little bit tastier as Bug Snacks is revealed to be launching on November 12th, the same day as the PS5. Hey, that's good news. And they announced their voice cast, which has a lot of heavy hitters. Yeah, yeah. I was surprised. Which I think is really funny. I assume Sony must have given them some cash because <laughs> I didn't, I didn't get the impression from the success of Octodad that they would be super flush. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Sony must have said like, Hey, make this thing cool. Here's some money. I, I like this know. is oh. like Yuri Lowenthal. Spider-Man is yeah. uh, in here. Uh, yeah. Who else? <laughs> Oh, they yeah. released a clip where it looks like some of the bug snacks just say their own names very much in like a Pokemon style. They very much mm-hmm. do, yeah. Mm-hmm. That, they do. That's I didn't good. know that. That's pretty good. The, yeah, the giant bomb uh, video of it is is pretty is like thirty minutes long, um, and shows some of those features, uh, including that they say their own names, which is good. It, Still seems like a game that I'm not super interested in. Uh, oh, I was like, aesthetic, I'm so excited for it. <laughs> I like the aesthetic of it. I don't really have a lot of. I'm there's a there's a there's a part of me that I'm ready for thinking about bug bug snacks tweets to to what? to to end. <laughs> Sometimes I scroll and I'm like, I understand. Lots of people are continuing to think about bug snacks. <laughs> they got. Like, this is just, I'm just looking at this list of their voice actors, and they've got like substantial people as their voice actors for the bug snacks. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that they could have awesome. done that them, They could have done that themselves, but no, they got like proper voice actors to do shish, shishka bug and raspy and stuff like that. Like, okay, sure. I think I will play it and it does look like it's going to be a really great or a good thing, you know, like, so I don't mean to like suggest Mm -hmm. that that I'm like, fuck this game or anything. Yeah. But also should be noted. It is coming out November 12th for PS five, but also PS four and PC. Yes. Yes. Yep. All right. I'll play that on PS five, maybe, (laughs) which is a weird thing to, (laughs) to, I don't see why it even needs a PS5 version, but Just sure. Chris in your PS5 with these sick bug snacks. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, our next news story. There's been scuttlebutt. There's nothing confirmed, but this has been reported that xCloud is coming to iOS next year, despite Apple's attempts to say, absolutely not. You got to do an, a separate application for each game you want to stream. They're going to be doing a browser-based solution, much like Amazon has planned for Luna. And, or is that available yet? Uh, I don't even know. I don't no, think so. Uh, Not yet. And I've heard no one talk about Luna. <laughs> yeah, it kind of uh, flopped since the announcement. But we'll see how that goes down the line. But um, yeah, so supposedly in an all-hands meeting, Phil Spencer revealed uh, to Microsoft employees that XCloud will be coming in 2021 to iOS via the browser yep. we'll see how long apple allows this to happen i don't know how they could stop it they can't that's the thing blacklist mm. x cloud on all apple devices through a software update there's ways but they would be very very intrusive and exactly up a whole bunch of other apps too so they, yeah they shouldn't. yeah and and yeah. i mean if they did if they if they went after this solution from microsoft they're already being scrutinized for antitrust stuff and yeah i think they would I think this would be a blatant. Um, they basically would be throwing their court position if they were to do that. And oh yeah, yeah. I figured that this is how Microsoft would eventually get around it. Um, when I saw that yeah. Luna was going to be doing that, yep. Um, I'm surprised, to be frank, that Stadia hasn't already figured this out. Like Google hasn't already figured this out with Stadia because they can't even figure out how to put it, uh, put Stadia on their own products. Yeah. So yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, but that's uh, dumb, but yeah. 
it's and hey i mean like spencer pointed out that like it's not the best solution people would prefer to just push a native oh, yeah. app and that's then and have like a library like that but if it yeah. works once you get in game like i mean if it's easy to full screen it and then it works with your connected yeah. controller then i don't see the problem with this as the solution yeah um there are technical weirdities you get into that when, when i was making games seven or whatever years ago uh we exported them to html5 when that was pretty early like that was right when people were talking about oh flash seems like it might be dying so let's build these games for HTML5 because they're, you know, they're meant to be browser games and they're meant to live in perpetuity. And there are a lot of quirks which HTML5, such as like if you want the audio to work, you have to have the user touch it at least once in a browser. Like yeah. you can't just start the app or like the, the program and have it have audio. Like they actually have to, to interact with it before it will play any audio. So like th there's probably a lot of concessions they will have to make in order to get it to work in a browser that you don't have to worry about in a native app but if it works it works yeah like that's what matters yeah interesting well we'll see how that goes when it shows up hopefully uh, all that goes smoothly because x cloud should be places did they change the name of that or is it still x cloud it's they still call it x cloud okay XCloud. yeah all right i think it's it's out there isn't it as a part of uh yeah. Pass ultimate yeah 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 I just wasn't sure if they, I don't know, Xbox Game Stream or something. I don't know. <laughs> it's NVIDIA Game Stream, so it, they wouldn't do that. They, um, It still doesn't have every, I think it's technically still in beta. Um, it's open, but it's still in beta, mm -hmm. and it doesn't have every single It's got game. like 100 games or something. Yeah. Not even that many, I that's don't think, but that could be. It's still a lot. Uh, yeah, I don't know. But it's, you know, it's still, it's, it's a neat idea. It plays more games than the Xbox Series X right now, maybe. Allegedly, probably not. It might, it, might already it, play more games than Stadia. <laughs> yeah, that I think it probably does. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, next story: Avengers dips below one thousand users, uh, active players on the PC, uh, yeah. which that's that's low. Uh, yeah the I game's mean, been out for a while there's not been any content updates yeah yet. there's no reason to play it right now so yeah uh, so we'll see game is bad it, it'll be game. yeah it'll be interesting to see what changes when the first kind of which uh, expansion stuff like the new characters and stuff comes out in sometime this month supposedly i thought it was supposed to come out by the end of september originally the first bit well, and then the it was, game gonna... was a little bit messy which a little bit yeah expected but yeah so um, i don't know i thought their release their like war table right before it came out was like hawkeye's first part of hawkeye coming in september but maybe i'm misremembering um, i don't know uh, it was supposed to be like weeks within weeks um it sounds I'll like that stuff's and... coming soon but yeah i'll hop back in and play that content i still think the game is good um from a core gameplay perspective it's just that the end game content is a brutally repetitive loop of mm -hmm. the same shit you've been playing and there's nothing yeah. unique about it. It does not have any narrative content. It doesn't have any kind of unique design. Like I don't think it's an Anthem scenario because I think that the story of that game and playing through it and stuff is good in a way that Anthem was mm -hmm. not. So, mm -hmm. and I, but... I just wonder if people are going to stick around uh, and you know, if they're going to keep people, putting in money to keep them generating the content. It's definitely a question for me. Cause originally I was like, Oh yeah, I'll buy all the battle passes, but I haven't finished the, the character cards or whatever that came with mm -hmm. the game. Uh, at this point I will check out, I haven't uninstalled it. I will check out the Hawkeye um, stuff. Yeah, when it that, hits. That's kind yeah. of what's keep, but, what's going to keep me or bring me back to play it more is, is that content, but that's but, kind of it right now. And they need to provide, I don't give a fuck about, I have skins. I like, <laughs> I don't give a fuck about unlocking more of them and calling cards and shit, unless there's compelling content for me to play with other people. Yeah. Like that at a certain point, it's like, and if the character looks, with. yeah, if the character looks cool enough to me, then fine. So that's yeah. the big question mark for their monetization is I am going to come back and play whatever story content they add because I like their characters, but I, I don't see a reason to purchase a battle card or what a challenge yeah. card for Hawkeye. If 
I like the base outfit that they mm-hmm. that that Kate and and Clint have, and am not going to play with other people. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, what's the point? <laughs> And you're talking to somebody who's put $25 into a gotcha game in the last week. So (laughs) it does not take that much to get me to spend money. (laughs) Well, you you did spend $70 on the game as that's uh, true. And I probably won't look at it again until I have a PS five, which at this rate, who knows when that'll be. And that's a big question mark too. I think is, you know, I could see if they get cross save in place, which I, Mm -hmm. I don't know if they'll ever be able to do because stuff is tied to local saves. So it's not yeah. all living in the cloud. So maybe that's just a pipe dream. Um, but if it's if, if, such a bizarre choice, it is, it's a terrible choice in my opinion. But if they, if they were to implement some kind of cross save, I would almost be willing to purchase the game again on PS five. If it runs well there. And that's where people that I know are playing it. Cause the, the, the one person to get it real cheap. Yes. The one person that was playing it with me on PC, I think he probably has it installed still and would still play with me if I brought it up. But we 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 played like two or three weeks pretty heavily together every couple nights and then it totally fell off once we realized that the end game was shit <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, i didn't even finish the like technically the post game story because mm-hmm. the stuff it started asking me to do i was like this is crashing on me it's frustrating you're starting to run worse for some reason like 20 hours into the post game and it isn't it's getting worse as I play it. So that's why I put it down. Cause it was like, it's how is it possible that this game that I've really enjoyed is now getting worse <laughs> from a technical <laughs> perspective? Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, all right. I got two more pieces of news. I'm going to switch the order here and say crucible <clears throat> Amazon's, uh, weird arena shooter yeah. thing. Kind of like, third person the game, the game that came out mm-hmm. the game that mm-hmm. came out and then uncame out mm-hmm. that went back it came from released to closed beta that's not the way that that's supposed to happen yep and uh, is now development is uh s- ceasing uh you will still be able to play the game i think there's like one more update that's coming out that's adding like custom games and some other stuff. You'll still be able to play the game in custom games, but everything else is basically going away. There's not going to be any new content. Yeah. Huh. The, I thought it was an interesting um, thing that uh, Josh Sawyer of Obsidian Entertainment said earlier today that originally Bezos from a wired story that was published a while ago, Mm -hmm. Bezos indicated that their games initiative was a way that, that would, um, aspects of their games initiative. I don't know. I don't have the full context of the story Mm -hmm. are, were designed. The point was make people go, Oh shit, we need to be on AWS. Like Mm -hmm. do games where it's like, Oh, 10,000 players on a, in one server, people are going to go, Oh my God, I need to have that server infrastructure for my website. And Josh Lawyer was like, just pointing out in this tweet thread, you can go look it up for yourself, but that anytime you're designing a game because you want to show off a tech feature and sell something else, you're mm-hmm. clearly already just, <laughs> you can just yeah. pack it up. <laughs> that that's a very yeah. cynical and bad way to, to approach game development. Well, and I mean, Crucible wasn't even that, well, like it wasn't some I, massive, like also, we've seen that kind of game before that's what gears of war was the first gears of war Mm -hmm. like that was used to sell unreal engine to developers so like so i don't entirely agree because i think gears of war is good uh well and you'd have to read the whole thread i'm i'm kind of paraphrasing it's uh, i I haven't read the thread that's fair um but i mean like the first tweet is i've had to work with publishers who think this like this before wondering vaguely at potential tech features and a vacuum is the red flag of truly disconnected and creatively bankrupt of the truly disconnected and creatively bankrupt the goal isn't experiential the goal is to show off quote something I would also argue yeah. that the first Gears of War is not a particularly good game. Um, uh, I know that well, it, people also, attach to it, but you're showing off like, okay, we made Unreal Engine. It's four games. <laughs> Make a game with this thing that we, you know, the same thing we used. Whereas, you know, 
Amazon web services. Like it's, you know, that could be anything. And like, yeah, yeah. you can get 10,000 yeah. people in here, but do you have the money to make a 10,000 person money and resources to make a 10,000 person, you know, game server? Like totally probably I think, not. I think more, a, a better much. example than gears of war might be crackdown three and their initial mm. pitch of like, yeah. You, it's going to have to use the cloud because the, the destruction is so yeah. crazy. And that stuff never even made it in the game. And the game that came out was, and it, it was in the like, multiplayer. Uh, was it? I, th I think so. Cause like either you way to be connected to it's like not online a, to play multiplayer, but it's not a good game. <laughs> uh, you have to be connected online to play multiplayer. Yeah. Isn't that just the way it works? If you're playing that's, multiplayer. I think that's how it works. Well, you know, bull, bull, because the original pitch was when there when the Xbox One was always online. And so mm -hmm. like all the all the stuff will be in the cloud, but then when they had to change and make it not always online, that got the cloud stuff got pulled from the single player. And but I believe it was used in the multiplayer because you're always online for that. I don't know. Because, yeah. What what I will say is that <clears throat> I, no offense to the people who worked on Crackdown, because I'm sure that they worked very hard on it, but creatively bankrupt would be a very good way to describe <laughs> Crackdown 3, unfortunately. So, uh, yeah. What, putting Crucible Terry Crews in a video Crucible. game doesn't count as creativity? Yeah. Crucible He's not even good. very good in it. Crucible is not very good. So, like nope. that. And you're totally right. And in that if it was just meant to act as a tech demo to sell people on AWS... Mm -hmm it failed because no one wanted to touch it. And I don't know that that is the context of this wider story. Um, it could be that, that, you know, Bezos is talking about other games. The point I think that is being made there is that the Bezos is the guy at the very top of this. And if that's the way that he's approaching game design on any level, given how hands-on he still is at Amazon, mm -hmm. it's probably doesn't bode well for Amazon game studios as a whole. Um, yeah. So yeah. ho hopefully yeah, it, a new it, world it, it, doesn't suck, although it has certainly some shitty <laughs> tropes in it, it already. Is, it is worth noting that the studio is not being like shuttered or no. and those people not let go. Just They're good. being moved around that's, to other right. positions, either on the new world or other games that and may have not been announced yet. So I don't even know that they are necessarily, it's hard to know how passionate they were about crucible from a, like, this is our baby perspective, you know? Yeah. I don't, I don't know. It, 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 it doesn't have, I think we've talked about it. It could have been just like, here are six games on a blackboard and yes. you're going to make one of these. And originally that game was pitched as more of a battle Royale with a high player count. Um, I don't think it was ever 10,000. Was it 10,000? No, I don't think so. But it was originally pitched as a battle God. Royale and then they missed that boat and then kind of pared it down to being this like squad based thing and it had some interesting ideas, but the cycle, another game being made by an indie studio is does all of the things that crucible does, but like 10 times better, uh, and is actually kind of interesting. And so there just was no, I don't think there was any future for, for that game. Um, and More I know there are calling, I know there are talented people who worked on it. So clearly it wasn't just that it was made by a super inexperienced team. Um, but it was, wasn't it the double helix people? I think so. Hmm. Well, all right. And our next, uh, our one last news story, unless I think of something else is, uh, there was a big, uh, AMD event this week where they showed off some processors and gave the oh, yeah. tiniest, tiniest taste of big Navi. And they said, hey, listen. Doesn't it? If it's we Big Navi, wouldn't it be like, hey, hey listen. listen. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's still super high, but it's just way louder. Oh, oh no. God. I don't like that at all. It's like the worst of all yeah. worlds. It's like the beginning of mouth dreams. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Um, yeah, the Big Navi thing. I like how Lisa Sue actually called it Big Navi. They're like, yeah, the, our community started calling it that. Now we just call it that. <laughs> <laughs> and okay yeah, they, it, was, it was funny and uh it's what were your takeaways from this alex um, you watched it i assume yeah i watched it um the new cpus look good 
and the communities, the AMD communities online fucking flipped their shit because they raised the prices by $50. And made the like made real good processors, so like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and like I don't, I can't, I cannot fathom why the community is flipping their shit. Um, like, uh, they have like 20 percent, 19, 20 percent performance gains over the previous gen because like, it's, so it's not it's, as much of like a kick dirt in the face of Intel as it would be if they kept the prices super low. Uh, yeah, but the prices but, are still below for the performance you're getting, but yeah, they're still good, like. Uh, it, it was just kind of like almost embarrassing watching how crazy people were getting about it. Oh like yeah, it was, well yeah. It, it was well, PC gamers the point. embarrassing themselves. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> dying on hills which don't make any sense. Like they were talking about it as though it was like this huge slight on them as a community, and that AMD had failed them, and like how dare they do this to their core audience? And it's literally like a fifty dollar change for a, a chip that has yeah. more silicon in it. It's like it they are. They probably tools. already have like a thirty nine fifty X or some shit, and they're just like, I need the new one. Like, there are people yeah, complaining about not having enough white hairstyles, like white people hairstyles in Baldur's Gate 3's character creator. So PC oh, gamers. Wow. Uh, just a unique a unique brand of dipshit asshole <laughs> oh no. yeah <laughs> yeah it was unique brand yeah 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 i mean uh-huh. like like i would argue largely can be but but also i mean i'm not say, not trying to say every person oh I yeah. am a no it's yeah. 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 me yeah. <laughs> it me unless pc yourself. gamer yeah, unless you're self-burning but no the the new cpus look good uh i'm building my pc i'll probably get one of those because they seem very solid. But wait for benchmarks is the thing I will always say. Always. If, anyone is, if anyone's interested in this, any kind of technology, wait for the benchmarks to come out because uh, that'll give you some it, kind of real world uh, context for how it works. It seems crappy that they don't let the review embargo up before they're on sale. Like it seems like same yeah. day is usually when they're. Uh, last. last year with the 3000s these are the 5000s yeah. by the way which yes is funny. yes um uh but they those ben- those benchmarks went live i think a week before the launch so they might oh, do it they? this time okay. yeah Maybe. as far as i've heard the reviewers have already benchmarked them uh it's just that they're waiting on the embargoes wait really yeah um steve from gamers nexus said something about how that they did that and same with um virtual foundry maybe Oh, like weird. The, the thing, okay. The thing, well, yeah, that they were able to. Well, um, yeah. If they if they let the the I thought because I thought I saw Linus Tech Tips saying like, uh, oh, they were on sale on like November fifth or something. Isn't that right? Yeah, and you'll November probably 5th. expect to review the same day. Is what he said. I think. Yeah. They, Which they I was like, really? None of them. None of them know when the actual embark was up. But yeah, that's neither here nor there, really. Um, yeah. Hopefully yeah. they're you yeah. know ahead of time. But yeah. It'd be nice. But no, they look good. Okay, and then they gave some a tease of the big Navi stuff, and that was looking decent performance-wise, right? It was very impossible to tell from. Mm-hmm. from what yeah, I guess. Yeah, like, they didn't they, actually show. They, they, they just show put it. some graphs up or something. They, no, they're not even that. They just played showed some gameplay of Borderlands Three or like the, oh, whatever really? the okay. uh, whatever the uh, the benchmarking tool is in Borderlands Three. It looks like okay. it could be it could be running similarly to like a thirty eighty maybe but mm-hmm. it's, it's impossible to say and without price or like any of that stuff it's right. hard to tell yep well all right is there any other news that anyone wants to talk about uh, uh do you want to say and, get out there and vote oh, yes get out there and vote uh Condolences to the folks at uh, GameSpot and other mm-hmm. uh, God. CBSI yeah, those properties, oh, man, yeah, CBSI that's properties rough. that are being sold to Red that's, Venture Media. That's who, uh, is, yeah, there are a lot of folks being uh, made redundant, losing their jobs. Uh, that's going to be happening, I believe, until the 13th, which is just bullshit. <laughs> like, yeah, it's crazy. That, yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. It's awful. Do that. <laughs> Yeah, but yep. What do you expect? I guess uh, not that. So hopefully people land on their feet, and this is real, real tough time to be going through that. 
Uh, so hopefully things turn out okay. Um, with that, I think we'll wrap up this episode. We're so we're under time, people. I know. What are we going to talk about for 45 minutes? Okay, so remember that scene oh, in no. Igarashi? <laughs> oh, no. All right, this okay, has been episode bye. 142 <laughs> of the Gaming Fix podcast on October 10th, 2020. I have been your host, Andre Cole, a.k.a. your partner's favorite noodle. You can find me on Twitter at CoolSlaw, C-O-O-L-S-L-4-W. And you can find the podcast uh, on Twitter at Fix Podcasts. And you go to fix.space to find like a podcast on all the platforms of your choosing and like some reviews. Podchaser.com slash gaming fix to leave us a review or iTunes. You know, that's all good stuff. Pat, where can people find you? You can find me on Twitter at PJC Plays. Allison? You can find me on Twitter at W R I T E R S E R E N Y T Y. And Alex. Uh, you can find an article I'll be writing in a couple of days, probably on fixed hot space. Uh, okay. So do you think when they do the reanimation of, there's a uh -huh. lot of people with like cr scenes with like crushed faces from baseball bats in Higurashi uh -huh. yep. and they don't show it in the original, but I don't know if that's because it's like too, too much or if it's like the animation fidelity wasn't there. I'm really curious if they're going to like show some fucked up, like, caved in faces in the new one probably <laughs> that's gonna be real rough <laughs> great really making me want to watch it <laughs> uh, stay wet gamers <laughs> there's one, i think there was something else i want to say but you just you, you i was gonna it. say you could fade it out while i'm starting that thing but you, we have to get the stay wet gamers in there so <laughs> Uh, goodbye everyone bye <laughs> goodbye <laughs>